Hello and welcome to the stream. I know it's a little bit early, but I was kind of excited to try this mod out. And I only watched one thing while I ate, so I had plenty of time. And I kind of wanted a little bit more time with it. Because I'm not going to have a whole lot, because I got a grub hub. So, I think it's going to be kind of exciting. Uh, a Risen Demon was the one that, su that suggested the Cauldron mod. And I looked it up in the workshop, and it looks pretty fantastic. So, yeah, I think it's going to be pretty good. And I was looking at the random... Um, like, trying to set up some random matches. And I noticed that often, or pretty much all the time, it was picking at least one Cauldron mod thing. Because the Cauldron mod adds a lot. Like, they were, they were correct. It adds a lot. It adds, like, 22 heroes, 17 villains, I think, and 15 locations, or environments is what they call it. Kind of insane, and it looks like it's going to be very interesting to try out. Now, this is fan-made, so it may not work completely. I mean, it'll probably be like that one guy's card, you know, that said it would heal him, but didn't. Because it's a liar, I guess. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. Anywho. Let me go ahead and run the ads and I'll be right back. Okay, let's get rid of that. And I guess without further ado, let's check out the cauldron mod, shall we? So like I said, I'm going to do just random, and we'll just see how much of it is cauldron mod. Because you can see now that I have tons of villains. Because after choke point, this is the core game. She's part of the core game. And these are part of the cauldron mod. You can tell the art is still pretty good. You can definitely tell it's different. But it's still pretty darn good. And I hear that it's like one of the best mods. There's also like a menagerie or what was it again? I'm not sure what it is, but it's another one that adds a bunch of villains and heroes and environments as well. Some of the mods are just only heroes, some of them are only villains, some of them are only environments, some of them are only promos and stuff, but I don't know. We'll we'll look into that later. Well, let's just randomize it and see what we get. Oh, hell yeah, look at that. I'm pretty sure this is almost all Cauldron mod. Setback's the only one not from the Cauldron mod, I think. Is he Cauldron? Yeah, he's Cauldron. So you can tell if it's Cauldron by right-clicking and seeing if it's mod, cult mod content Cauldron. Whereas you can see this one doesn't have mod content. This is a mod boss. He's a difficulty too. 
So, I mean, it's going to take some time. This is also a cauldron environment. Difficulty one, so that's not too bad. I guess let's try it, right? I mean, we have setback again. We, we at least know setback. All these other ones are going to be completely brand new. Let's try it, though. See what happens. The environment doesn't look super great. <laughs> The blight of your powers will be wiped clean from this earth and every other. The power of the djinn will be your undoing. He's a djinn? Damn. Okay, that's cool. He's got a cool looking back of his deck. I like that. Let's check out the Outlander here. At the start of the game, Outlander enters play Fragmented Rift Warrior side up. That's going to be this one. Search the villain deck for all trace cards and put them beneath this card. Put one random trace card from beneath this one into play. Shuffle the villain deck. Cards beneath this one are not considered in play. Trace cards are indestructible. Oh, good. When he would be destroyed, he flips instead. What happens when he flips? He looks pretty angry. He gets a mask? Okay. Union of the Lost. When Outlander flips to this side, restore him to 20 HP, so you have to fight him all over again. Destroy all copies of Anchored Fragment, and put a random trace into play. Then, if there are fewer than four trace cards in play, Outlander flips. Okay, so he can flip back over again. That's annoying. Cards beneath this one are considered in play. Are not considered in play. Trace cards are still indestructible. And reduce the first damage dealt to Outlander each turn by four. Ooh, he's got some armor. He's a beefy boy. Okay, all right, let's do it. So he gets all his trace cards, and he gets one random trace card in play. So there are there are five trace cards. Ongoing, huh? Okay. Ouch. That wasn't very nice. Hold on, what does that do? When this card enters play, Outlander deals the non-villain target with the highest HP X plus 3 melee damage, where X is the number of trace cards in play. Gotcha. Reduce all HP recovery by 1. At the start of the villain turn, destroy this card. Okay, so... Oh man, he also reduces HP recovery? That sucks. There is one trace card in play. Wait, is he... Are you guys Nemesis? No, he doesn't even have a symbol. Why did he take five damage? Unless it has something to do with his trace. Oh, yep, there it is. Increased damage dealt by Outlander by one. Yep. The end of the villain turn, Outlander deals the non, uh, the two non-villain targets with the highest HP, two irreducible melee damage each. Oof. That's rough. Okay. Fine. So it's just going to be two irreducible damage, huh? Hmm. Well, setback already took a shitload of damage, so let's let's just give it to the other people. Hey, about the girls' school pictures and picture day is March second. Nice. Nice. Welcome to the stream, Brooke. Wait, what? No. The hell am I not like confirming? Oh, I see how it is. You have to pick the two, then you have to pick who gets it first. Okay. I mean, it, it makes sense. And sometimes that can make a difference. Okay, let's see what our heroes can do. Because these guys are brand new. This is uh, Cauldron mod, as you can see, mod co content Cauldron. Also, if we do this with the, the cards, are also Cauldron, of course. So let's see what his power is. Search your deck for a djinn and put it in your hand. Shuffle your deck. Okay, I mean, these seem to be djinns. They seem to be uh, like minions. That's kind of cool. These are also djinns? Jeez. But these are ongoing limiteds? Damn. What is this? I Bathiel. When this card enters play, attach it to Bathiel. If Bathiel is ever not in play, destroy this card. Oh, I see. So they're buffs for the Jins. 
Bathiel deals one target four energy damage and destroy this card. Wow. And it just increases the damage dealt by him? Hmm. Not bad. At the end of your turn, this card may deal one target to energy damage. This card is immune to energy damage. When this card would be destroyed, destroy a Jin ongoing attached to it instead and restore it to 5 HP. Otherwise, put it in your hand. Oh, wow. Really? So it just goes back to your hand? Never goes to the trash, really? That's amazing. And these are like buffs to the gins. That's interesting. Okay, well, I mean, we'll play out Bathiel for sure. And then if I can, let's use a power. Let's see if we can get another gin. What was the one that I have in mind? Is it Samael? Yeah, I have high Samael. So if I get, oh wow, there's, is this another buff? Yeah, that is another buff, holy crap. Um, ooh, who are you? Ezael, okay, that's another Jin. Can I find Samael? There's Samael right there. I want you. Because I have your buff, too, dude. So I will take Samael. Prismatic Vision. It's a one-shot. Okay, this guy's already very interesting. So if I give you damage, will you actually take damage? Yeah. Yeah, so he doesn't lower the damage yet. That's when he flips. So this is Cypher. What are you, my friend? What is your power? One augmented hero may draw a card now? What the hell does that mean? There are no augmented heroes in play. Oh, do you augment heroes? If so, that's kind of cool. It's a power. Cypher deals himself two irreducible energy damage. If he takes damage this way, destroy one ongoing or environment card. What do you mean, if he takes damage this way? It's irreducible. Of course he's going to take damage this way. Unless maybe he's immune? I don't know. Hey, there's one of the bosses from the Cauldron mod. Reveal cards from the top of the deck until you reveal an augment. Put it into play or into your trash. Shuffle the rest of the real reveal cards into your deck. If you did not put an augment into play this way, draw two cards. Hmm, that's interesting. Or Cyborg Blaster. You may move one augment in play next to a new hero. One augmented hero deals one target two lightning damage. Well, damn. That's not going to help any. I guess I'll do this one. Try and find an augment. There's an augment. Fusion Aug. So, whoops. What does this do? Play this card next to a hero. The hero next to this card is augmented. That hero may use an additional power during their power phase. Oh, well, that's interesting. And what was his ability again? One augmented hero may draw a card now. I mean, that's pretty good too. Hmm. Use an additional power during their power phase. What other kind of powers are there? What, what are her powers? Oh, that's, that's the female version of the knight. Oh, I didn't even realize it. The knight and all her targets regain 2 HP. Man, that's freaking good. Wait. And all her targets. What the hell does that mean? I guess maybe that means anything she puts into play that's like a minion? Maybe that's not as good as I thought. Maybe it's better to do setback just so we can play more cards. It would be hilarious. Yeah, sure, I'll I'll, uh, I'll put it in the play, sure. I'm, I'm just going to put it on setback. Because let, let's be super risky, right? Why not? And he can draw a card right now. Hell yeah. Setback draws a card. The plucky break is actually pretty good. Networked attack. Each augmented hero may use a power now. Damn. Really strong. If you can get people to be super augmented. What is looking up again? 
the start of your turn, if you have 10 or more tokens, Setback deals himself 3 Psychic Damage. The power is add 3 tokens to your unlucky pool, Setback deals 1 target, 3 melee damage. I mean, it's... it's risky, but it's super fun! Lucky break, if there are 0 tokens in your unlucky pool, Setback regains 3 HP. I mean, that's actually pretty good, too. Did this say you can use another card? No. But I could double use this power and beat the shit out of the Outlander. Wait. Can I? Actually, I might not be able to. Because I bet the AUG only lets you... It says use an additional power during their power phase, which probably means I can use this and this. Well, I'll definitely use looking up for sure. And I'm going to beat the crap out of him. Get punched. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't let me use this power again. Which is fine. Risk? Uh oh. Uh oh. What did that do? Hold on a tick. Oh no. Hold on. What was that? I, I don't think I've ever played this one. If you have fewer than 7 tokens in your unlucky pool, remove one of them. If you do, setback regains 2 HP. If you have 7 or more tokens in your unlucky pool, remove 7 of them and deals... Oh yeah, that's right. I have done that before. But I didn't have enough tokens. Wasn't he supposed to regain 2? It looked like he only regained 1. I don't know, maybe not. Okay. So what does the knight do? We can regain HP, which is kind of cool. Search your deck for a single hand, single hand equipment card and put it into play. Shovel your deck. Select a hero target until the start of your next turn. Increase damage dealt by that target by one. Interesting. Heavy swing. The knight deals one target, three melee damage. Solid. Whetstone. Increase melee damage dealt by the knight by one. I mean, that's really good. But maybe it's just better to just swing? I think I'm just going to do the heavy swing. Let's just do it. Oh. Oh, holy shit, they're Nemesis! Oh, awesome. How lucky that we get the knight. Happens to be his Nemesis. I guess you could use a power? I don't think it's going to do anything. Is she's at maximum HP already? I, I, I don't know. Oh, maybe that all her targets is like the ones that she's buffing? With cards? Because remember she had that one that was like, oh, you pick a target and that target does more damage. What the hell is that thing? Oh, excuse me? Hold on. Hold on. What is this? Citadel Garrison. Ancient Automaton. At the start of the environment turn, this card deals the hero target with the second highest HP, 5 radiant damage? Ouch. Then if Starlight of Oros and Atheum Cannon are in play, discard two cards from beneath Atheum Cannon. Well, I don't even have Starlight. She's not even in here. I guess the, the knight is just going to take some damage. Out of touch was destroyed. Good. Disarming Blow. Uh-oh. That seems bad. Outlander deals the two non-villain targets with the highest HP, three melee damage each, and any hero damage this way discards a card. How many? The two non-villain targets with the highest HP? Oh, that sucks. Oof, that's gonna really suck for her. She's gonna take so much damage. Because of Nemesis. And Crusader. Ouch. <laughs> just all of a sudden, just a fifth of the HP gone. And now people have to discard. Great. Well, I can probably get rid of looking up. I don't need both of them. Oh, God. What is this? You may play an equipment card, draw a card. Oh. Man, that's good. Oh, God, they're all so good. I don't know what to get rid of. I guess this one? It feels bad, but... Gotta get rid of something. Which target is considered to have the highest HP? What is it again? 
two non-villain targets with the highest HP. Damn it. I guess... I mean, I'm going to do setback because we know that he has that ability to come back. And I guess... Pfeiffer? I guess. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how they deal the damage. But sometimes it might matter because sometimes you can have somebody get hit and they'll be like, oh, if this person gets hit, they can reduce somebody else's damage or something when they get hit. Or You never know. So sometimes order does matter, but not always. And not usually, I should say. Oh, I got both high bathiels. Now, do I play the high bathiel or do I play Samael? What does Samael do? Or Somael? At the end of, the, of your turn, select a hero target. Reduce damage dealt to that target by one until the start of your turn. That's pretty good. He's immune to projectile damage. Huh. Okay. And what does High Samael do? Reduce damage dealt to Jin by one. Damn. That's really good. And a power. Reduce damage dealt to hero targets by one until the start of your next turn. Destroy this card. Okay, so it, they're basically like little buffs if you use the power. You can use them at a time and then they get destroyed. Two into your hand and one into your trash and you may play a Jin now? I mean, that's something. I mean, this is really good. Ugh. I mean, do you just do the four energy damage and destroy the card? Or do you just buff Balth Bathiel? Balthiel. Bath Bath Bathiel. Because he does two energy damage. But if I put this card on him, then he would do three energy damage each turn. Is that better than just doing the four energy damage? Not 100% sure. Wait, does this just say you can play a Jin? Do these count? These count as Jin, right? I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna try it. Because I kind of want to draw some cards. Select the first card to put in hand. Um, well, I don't need High Same. I already have that. Bait and switch. What's this? Discard a Jin card. If you do, you may put a Jin card from your trash into play or draw two cards. You may use a power now. I mean, that's cool. Unshackled. You may use an additional power during your power phase. Damn, that's a lot of powers. Uh, sure. I'll take that. I don't need High Samael, that's for sure. Because I already have that. Yeah, it is going to let me play High Bathiel. Nice. But I can't play this because it's a one shot. That is fine. Oh, this is also an ongoing limited. I think I'm going to play High Bathiel. That'll attach it to him, and now he becomes buffed up. Or I could use the power of this card and just do four energy damage, which would also do five energy damage, I think, because of this buff. Then it destroys the card. I mean, it's decent. Hmm. No, I think I'll just do this. Maybe grab some of these other gems. What do they actually do? At the end of your turn, one hero target regains two HP. Oh, she's just a healer? She's immune to radiant damage. That is something. But she also has a buff. Oh, wow. The power is all hero targets regain three HP. At the end of your turn, destroy this card. Wow. But it's not an actual buff card. That's too bad. Does she have a high card? Yes, she does. This is the buff card. So the grand one is like their master, like final form or whatever. At the end of your turn, each Jin regains one HP. Well, that's pretty solid. And the power is all Jin regain two HP. All other hero targets regain one HP. Wow. I mean, she's a decent healer. What does this guy do? Card is immune to sonic damage. The end of the turn deals up to two targets, one sonic damage each. Okay. Hey, that's the Lady of the Wood. I recognize her. And this card... Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, that's fine, too. Just one hero target regains two HP. I mean, that's pretty solid. I'll take that. That's pretty darn solid. And it's Grand Bathiel. Damn. How does that actually work? I've never actually tried a, a grand one. Hey, DJ. Welcome to the stream. When this card enters play, attach it to Bathiel. If High Bathiel is ever not in play, destroy this card. Oh, I see. So they have to be high to become grand. Gotcha. Bathiel deals one target, six energy damage. Damn. That is kind of crazy. And what is this? Select a target to be dealt damage. It's just going to be three energy damage. I'm worried about the Citadel Garrison. But I think I'm just going to do damage to the Outlander. Go. Yes. That's right, damage him with energy. And now let's find out what Cyborg is all about here. There's Augmented Heroes. Destroy one ongoing or environment card. That actually might not be a bad idea. One Augmented Hero deals one target to lightning damage. You may move one Augment and play to a new hero. I mean, it's super tempting to just move the Augment from him to her, now that I know that they're Nemesis. Actually, not a bad idea. I think I'm going to do that. Yes. I'll move this one to her. And then she can just immediately do damage, and it's going to do three damage instead of two. See? Three damage. Totally worth it. And what was his power again? One augmented hero may draw a card now? Oh, hell yeah. That's super hero. Or super great. Because she had the discarded card. Two targets, one damage each. Or one melee damage each. That's fine. Hey, there's the Lady of the Wood again. She's supposed to be a really difficult hero to play. Alright, what do we got? Reckless Rush. Two tokens to the Unlucky Pool. Hmm. Or Plucky Break. Draw one card and setback deals one target to melee damage. If you remove two tokens, I mean, sure. That's fine. I can remove two tokens. Hey, there's Raw. So I could do two damage to him. Sure. Take that. He's about to flip. He's not about to die. He may look like he's about to die, but he's about to flip. Do I just do the looking up again? I mean, I might as well. I have zero, like one token. Hell yeah, I'm gonna totally do looking up. Just beat the shit out of the Outlander. He's gonna flip, which is gonna be scary. He's flipping. Yep, he flipped. He's back to 20. Oh shit, he gets to immediately draw a trace card. That sucks. And he immediately flipped back! You piece of shit! What? Is he even killable? Why did you immediately flip back, back dude? When out Flander flips to the side, restore him to 20 HP, destroy all copies of Anchored Fragment, whatever that is, and put a random trace into play. If there are fewer than four trace cards in play, Outlander flips off. It's because I flipped him too early. I need more traces, apparently. That's bad. What does Mage Killer do? The first time a hero one-shot enters play each turn, Outlander deals the hero target with the highest HP, one irreducible lightning damage. At the end of the villain turn, Outlander deals the hero target with the highest HP, three melee damage? Ouch. Well, that's rough. I like the Maiden's Blessing. You may play an equipment card and draw a card. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna play that. And I'm gonna play... I'm gonna use that power to play the whetstone.
Not that I think it's going to be super useful. Oh. What was that? Oh. It actually has health, too. When this card enters play, you may draw a card. When the knight would be dealt damage, you may redirect the damage to this card. Nice. So she's got armor. That's pretty fantastic. She can also still use her ability to regain some health. Sweet. Defender of the Realm. Hmm. Playing Karax right now? Nice. Had, had Dome Best Tandems? What? Ow. Oh, that was a lot of damage. Uh oh. Ah, he took damage. And it's destroyed. Okay. What did it do? I have no idea. Oh, not out of touch again. Damn it. Well, oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh yeah, that hurts a lot. Ouch. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna have to be both of them. Ouch. And he's supposed to be one of the easier ones to fight? The hero target with the highest HP. Three melee damage. I guess I'll do knight? Oh, uh, no, because he'll do tons of damage to her. I'll do setback. He can at least come back, I know. Maybe, if he ever draws that card. I don't know if he will. Hmm. So we need more trace cards for him to stay flipped for us to be able to beat him. That's unfortunate. Wait. Didn't it say that if he flips, he immediately finds a trace card? Restore him, destroy all copies, and put a random trace into play. Okay, yeah. So you can either wait for him to get all the traces, or keep flipping him to find all the traces. Rough. Really, really rough. I think I'm gonna get an Ezael out there. She can at least heal. Hmm... Yeah. Yeah, I'll grab another gin. I think I'm gonna grab you because you'll actually do some damage too. Solomon's fire. What's that do? Didn't get to read that. Play this card next to a target. Increase damage dealt to that target by gin cards by one. If that target leaves play, destroy this card. Oh, that's nice. Pretty tight. And we'll just keep dealing him damage. Hope and pray that this freaking environment card will go away. Who do I want to heal? I'm going to heal Setback. Because I know the knight can heal herself, at least. Nanite Surge? What's this? You may draw a card, you may play a card. Each augmented hero regains X HP, where X is the number of augments next to them. I mean, that would be great if I had more augments, but I don't. I think I might just do hacking program. Oh, it's a power. Oh. I thought it was a one-shot. Why did I think it was a one-shot? I'm going to do the damage to myself. He does two irreducible energy damage, but then he can destroy an ongoing or an environment. Out of touch is going to destroy itself already, so I'm just going to destroy the garrison because it's really super annoying. It's doing way too much damage. Cyber defense. Weird. I did a big dent into a door. <laughs> I was so close to the door. Oh, wow. What does this one do again? Remove four tokens from your unlucky pool. If you do, each other player may use a power now. He deals himself two psychic damage. I mean, is it worth it? It's not particularly all that worth it. I don't... 
think it's that worth it. Although, I'm, I'm trying to think of powers. Like, he could get a Jin card. He makes somebody that's augmented draw a card, so she could draw a card. She could heal, which is at least something. Mm, I don't know. Or I could just do that later, too. And just try and do his power. Like, Plucky Break would do... Two melee damage? You know what? I think I will play that. Which target is considered to have the highest HP? Oh, shit, that's right. I have to take one irreducible lightning damage. Well, I'll just do it to her, because she can heal herself. Of course, she is going to take extra damage, which sucks. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Or she is the nemesis. Damn it. I forgot about that. Playing one shots is gonna suck with that trace out. It's gonna be real bad. You will take some damage. But this is not a one shot, right? He doesn't take any damage. I don't have 10 or more tokens, so he's not going to take any damage, so I might as well do the damage. Take this, you bitch. Oh! Punch. Another whoop, sorry. Great. There's Bunker. Hmm. Well, see, I could do Heavy Swing. To deal four, five damage to him? That's a lot of damage. What does this do? Vendor of the Realm. Search your deck for a copy of Plate Mail or Plate Helm and put it into play. Shuffle your deck. Select a hero target. Until the start of your next turn, reduce damage dealt to that target by one. Hmm. And she could technically heal that person too, I think. That actually might be worth it, because I have the Plate Helm already. But if I do this, I could get the Plate Mail? I'm going to do it. Yeah, that sucks. It's just going to happen, though. There's the Plate Mail. What does that do? When the Knight would be dealt damage, you may direct that damage to this card. I mean, it's got a lot more health, so sure. And it just immediately goes into play, which is cool. Wait, are they... Hold on. Are they not limited? Oh, no, they're limited. Okay, I was like, they have to be limited, right? She can't wear, like, eight helmets. Select the target to be reduced damage, or to reduce the damage they take. I think it's gonna have to be set back. Because the plan is... I mean, I could always just try to get the plate helm out by doing Maiden's Blessing. But if I heal... Uh-oh. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, I'm wrong. So it doesn't count. I guess they're saying that her and her male, all of her things that have HP themselves, all of her equipment heals too. She can use an extra power too. I forgot about that. So that's cool. Which means she can play the Blade Helm. Good. She's super buffed. That's awesome. Oh, you just paid for your replacement phone? Nice. Well, kind of nice. I'm sorry that you had to pay, though. I'm sorry my driveway broke your phone. I'm so sorry about that. I still feel so bad about that. Although that was funny. She was clutching her phone for dear life this last time. What is this? A super weapon? That sounds terrible. Oh, this is the Atheum Cannon. At the end of the environment turn, each player may put one card from their hand beneath this one. Cards beneath this one are not considered in play. If there are ever four, four times three cards beneath this one, this card deals one target 15 radiant damage and those cards are discarded. Huh. Four times three cards? That's like 12 cards. So they're basically saying you have to give up three cards. 
those cards are discarded. So you just, you basically lose those cards. But 15 radiant damage is massive. At the end of the environment turn? Hmm. This is each player. I don't think that means him. This is technically just us. So each of us would have to give up three cards over three turns. But doing 15 damage is huge. I think I'm going to skip for now, though. I think I need my cards for now. It's snowing again. It's okay, shit happens. That's true. It is true that shit happens. Uh-oh, there's that anchored fragment. Uh-oh. Well, that's bad. What is this? When this card enters play, Outlander deals the hero target with the highest HP 1 melee damage. At the start of the villain turn, if Outlander was not dealt at least 8 damage in the last round, destroy 4 hero ongoing and equipment cards? Yikes. Okay, that's bad. That's really bad. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna give her the uh, damage, of course. And then I could redirect the damage to the male, too. I might as well. It's three damage? To the plate male? Yeah. If I didn't redirect it to the plate male, I think they'd ask about the helmet, too. Oh, shit! It actually made it so it wasn't three damage, too, because he's not technically hitting her. I mean, sure, I'll do that again. Oh, who's considered to have the second highest HP? Good. Well, this is bad. Bad times. It's raining tacos? What? From out of the sky? Four melee damage. Would it destroy my plate mail? I feel like it would. He's going to do four, four melee damage because Nemesis? If I redirect it, is it three? It is three. Damn it. It's fine. The plate mail is meant to be destroyed. It's like a shield. It doesn't reduce damage or anything like that, which is kind of dumb. Mage Killer's going to hurt. Oh, that's going to hurt a lot. I guess I'll just let him take the damage. Oh, this is really bad. And they say this guy is easy? Like, I think he's a one difficulty? Doesn't feel like a one difficulty to me. By the way, where is... Oh, there's Unshackled. Let me use an additional power during your power phase? Eh. What was Solomon's fire again? Oh, yeah. That's actually really good. Or just Bashiel to do more damage. Let's see, Bathael will do three damage, correct? Solomon's Fire would buff it to four. What does Hysanael do? Reduce damage dealt to Jin by one. He's not really dealing damage to the Jin though, that's the problem. I don't think he has anything to do with the gin either. Like, all of his shit says non... Wait, does it say just player? Non-villain targets with the highest HP? It's all freaking highest HP. That's why. With the highest HP, yeah, it's all highest HP. Absolutely terrible. He doesn't do anything with the lowest HP, which means my gins are absolutely worthless. They will never do anything. By the way, what does High Reshiel do? I never even looked at that. There's Grand Reshiel. Where's High Reshiel? There you are. Increased damage dealt by Reshiel by one? Yeah, seems, seems pretty standard. Deals three targets, two sonic damage each. Interesting. Okay. I mean, it might make sense just to play Reshiel. Probably. I think I'm going to play Reshiel. 
And I could play Bathiel's. Or use Bathiel's power. I don't know. I think I think I'm gonna grab High Reshiel. Yeah, let's grab High Reshiel. Wait, what was Grand? All hero targets regain three HP. That's huge. But I can't do that because I don't. Wait, do I have High Ezreal already? I don't. That blows. And what was hers again? Each Jin regains one HP. And that doesn't stop her other thing from healing, right? I don't think it does. I think she would do both? What does Grand Reshiel do? Reshiel deals each non-hero target two sonic damage. I mean, it's great if there was a bunch of targets, but there's not. <sighs> I mean, High Ezreal actually seems kind of pointless anyway. Because none of the djinn are even taking any damage anyway. I think I will take High Reshiel. See if he can do more damage here soon. Friendly advice. Okay. Here you go, bro. Take some damage. Three damage. And then Ezeal gets to heal... I guess I'll put it on him, because he's got the lowest HP. And Reshiel will do some damage. Only one damage? Oh yeah, two targets, one sonic damage each. Oh, that sucks. It's up to two, right? Up to two, okay. Yeah, so I don't have to deal anybody else damage, which I'm not going to. I'm not going to deal any of my people damage. Whoopsie. There we go. That's fine. Hmm? Somehow I managed to bend my charger. Will you plug into the phone? Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all, DJ. You might have to just get a new charger. I mean, at least it's better than breaking it off in the phone. I've seen people do that. So I still have the hacking program, but I, I'm not worried about, like, getting rid of the super weapon. What is this cyber defense? Destroy any number of augments. Cypher deals each non-hero target X lightning damage, where X equals the number of cards destroyed this way. I mean, he has, like, no fucking augment, though. That's the problem. I can't find any augments. That's a one-shot. He would take damage. I don't even know if it's worth it. Let me draw a card and play a card. I mean, these are kind of terrible, honestly. Every single one of them is kind of terrible. And it's super rare to find those charges that I use right now. Oh, really? It's three meters long? Really? Wow, that's a long, that's a long cord. Um, God, I have no idea what to play. Like, if I play a one-shot, he's going to take damage. Oh, it's just the hero with the highest HP. It's not, like, a counter. Okay, that might be better, at least. I'm trying to think of who would want to use more powers, though. I guess I could put it back on setback, maybe. Do I have to move it? Wait, what was it? It was this. No, you may move one augment in play, so you don't actually have to. I'd rather not move it. I'd rather her keep dealing damage to him, because she'll do extra damage. Um... Yes? Because it should only do two damage, right? Yes, two damage. Good. Because the three damage is only because of the nemesis. Now, I could move the fusion og, but I don't really want to. So I'm going to say skip. And then I want her to deal damage to him, which will be three damage instead of two. 
Fantastic. And that should be enough damage. I think he's taken enough damage. Hold on. Outlander has taken seven damage this round. No, he's just shy of damage. Ah, crap. That's pretty bad. Let's let her draw another card. Play down. Okay. She can use lots of powers. Oh, hey, look, that's uh, Unity? I think that's Unity. Oh, man. Okay, so he's got five tokens. Each of them can use a power. I mean, it's not that useful. Not that useful. He has tons of Reckless Rush. Which I suppose I could do. Add two tokens to your unlucky pool. It is a one-shot, however. Hmm. He's just got one-shots. That's all he's got. Somebody's taking damage. And it looks like it's probably going to be her. Which means her plate helm will be destroyed. I'm not letting her take the damage, because it would be more damage. Wait, what does this do? Add two? And this adds three, so that's five altogether. I have a way of getting rid of tokens with the turn of events. This adds more tokens, right? Add or remove tokens. Oh, that's... something. It is belonging to another hero. It can't be him. That's too bad. Let's do the Reckless Rush. That's fine. Yep. Yeah, she's not going to take the damage. It'll just take damage and then it'll, it'll explode. That's fine. Yes. Beat him up. Now he can't let us... He can't make us destroy our ongoing cards, at least. Why was there two damage? Wait, what happened there? Hold on. What I missed there? Isn't there a log or something? Yeah, there we go. Oh no, these are the powers and stuff. It lets you know what's happening, like reduce damage dealt to setback by one. And Outlander has taken nine damage this round. Okay. What is... Isn't there supposed to be like a thing where you can like look at a log or something? Maybe not. Maybe not. I was trying to figure out why I heard two punches. That one shot doesn't do two punches, does it? Oh, it's because he hit himself. That's right. Never mind. Never mind. I'm stupid. Okay. Now we can do looking up. Wait. Hold on a second. Is that the start of the turn? Oh, no. That's bad. Hmm. I don't know if I want him to deal that much psychic damage to himself. I think I'm going to actually rewind it. Now let's just use Risk. Hope for something good. Bumbling Fool, what the hell is this? Discard the top card of each deck. You may add or remove four tokens from your unlucky pool. Hmm. Okay, fine. I even get to discard from his! I will remove four, thank you. Uncharmed life. <laughs> oh boy. Well, there's Plate Helm again. I, do, I know I know I don't have to play it because I can use the Maiden's Blessing. But that's fine. Swift Strike. This is for main... Yeah, two targets. I don't really want that. Heavy Swing would be much better. Is this just buff melee damage? Yeah, it's only melee damage, so it's not going to buff her damage from her augment, which is pretty sad. What does this do again? For a single hand equipment card and put it into play. Shuffle your deck. Okay. What is a single hand equipment card? 
Oh, I see. Like short sword. When this card is put into play, destroy all but two single hand equipment cards. Oh, so she can dual wield. Nice. Increase damage dealt by the knight by one. Just damage. Okay. And deals one target to melee damage. That is pretty freaking solid. Or there's the shield. When this card is put into play, destroy all but two single hand equipment cards. Reduce damage taken by the knight. And your equipment cards by one. Oh. That's not bad. And I think that's it. So she just has the sword and the shield. Hmm. That's actually not bad at all. What was it? Oh, that was this one, right? Yeah. And you put it into play, too. Huh. That is interesting. Okay, yeah, I think I'll play this. It is a one-shot, which is unfortunate. Which means she's just going to take a shitload of damage, which sucks. But now I can grab the stalwart shield. Oh yeah, and it goes right into play, which means she takes less damage now. Cool. Select a target to increase their damage? Oh, I thought it was decreased damage dealt. Oh, shit. Um... I mean, I guess I don't plan on doing any damage. Oh, Bathio? He does damage. Sure. I thought she was going to shield them. Now, I still get to use two powers. So I'm going to use Maiden's Blessing, for sure. Play the Plate Helm. It even makes her equipment take less damage, the shield does. Arm yourself. Oh. Knight's Honor. Why did I get to draw two cards? Does this let me draw a card? No. Hmm. Did this draw a card? Yeah, you may draw a card. Oh. Well, why did I draw two cards? Did you make me draw a card? No? Did you make me draw a card? Oh yeah, draw a card. Okay. Got it. Now, we heal. Good. There's the shield again. Damn it. Wait, so can I dual wield shields? Not that I think that would be great, but can you? Uh-oh. This seems bad. Hold on a second. What is this? At the end of the environment turn, this card deals each hero... Each hero target two infernal damage, and each other environment target two psychic damage. Then each villain target next to a constellation regains four HP. Well, you don't have any constellation, bitch. That's just gonna suck. Should we try the Atheum Cannon? Sure. I think I've got stuff that I can get rid of. What does Friendly Advice do? One character regains two HP. One player may draw a card. One player may put a card from their trash on top of their deck. I mean, it's very solid. This card a Jin card. If you do, you may put a Jin from your trash into play or draw two cards. You may use a power now. Eh. I mean, it's okay. I don't think Unshackled is going to be super useful. Let's get rid of that for now. Hmm? You still haven't gotten any response from the SOG team? What is SOG? Let's send the application. Oh, right. That's the uh, team. It will take up to 24 hours or more to process. Makes sense. That they are super laid community. Like a laid back community, you mean? I 
think... I'll just get rid of cyber defense. I don't think that's going to be super useful. Setback, you can probably get rid of one of these because I really don't want to destroy stuff. In the night, you can actually just get rid of the shield. I already have it. I'm not going to dual wield shields. Even if you can, I'm not going to. This is going to suck. Because everybody's just going to take a shitload of damage. Not much I can do about it. Not really a shitload of damage, it's just two. Now I kind of wish I had high Azale. So she could heal the gins up. Uh oh. HP is looking kind of low. Okay, good. At least the stalwart shield helps. And she could take less damage. No, no, I think she'll just take the damage. It's just one. Really don't want to give more damage to the hell, uh, the plate helm. As she can heal it. Disarming blow. Uh oh. This seems bad. Heals the two non-villain targets with the highest HP, three melee damage each. Any hero damage this way discards one card. Oh, that sucks. God, that sucks. Three melee damage. Huh. So this would end up being four. Even with Stalwart Shield, it's still four. Oh, that sucks. I, I guess I'm destroying the Blade Helm. That's too bad. I was hoping it could stick around for longer. Damn. God, he is so fucking strong. Just get rid of this, too. I don't like the whoops, sorry card at all. Jeez. Damn it, man. Oh, that must have been fucking irreducible damage. God, I hate irreducible damage. If he flips, he breaks the anchored fragment, which is good. I think I'm just, like, super fucked. I don't think this is possible at all. You can already see that people are getting pretty beat the shit out of. But I, d I don't think this is possible. There's just too much damage. I mean, I can do one more damage to him, but then he's just going to flip. He's going to break this. He's going to get another trace, and I'm going to take so much damage. I guess high rest shield is probably the best play here. Just to do more damage. Or Solomon's Fire. This lets him do extra damage. Because I don't have high Ezreal. I never took her. Or there's Grand Bathio, but... I mean, it seems kind of pointless. Do you ever have to destroy this? If High Bathiel is ever not in play, destroy this card. Oh yeah, so if you use the power of High Bathiel, this gets destroyed too. I mean, 6 energy damage is super good. And there's nothing else about these Grands that's worth anything. Hmm. I'm just going to go with High Reshiel. And I will use this power 
to grab high Ezio. Another bait and switch. That's fine. Crunchy chocolates are my favorite. Nice. Just do more damage to him, I guess. He's gonna flip. Back to 20. Anchored fragments destroyed. Trace. And he's gonna flip again, isn't he? He's gonna flip immediately. Yep, exactly. What does this new trace do? Dragonborn. The first time Outlanders dealt damage each turn, he deals the source of that damage for two fire damage. The end of the villain turn, Outlander deals each non-villain target one fire damage. Well, that's rough. That's pretty damn rough. Guess Cypher? This is really, really bad. Oh yeah, he can do multiple targets damage, right? Yeah, two targets, one son sonic damage each, which is actually going to be two, because he's got his buff. So I might as well do both of them. It's fine. There you go, bro. He's going to take some fire damage, which sucks. But hey, what are you, you going to do? Ow? What? The fuck? I thought it was supposed to be one damage. Oh, no, it wasn't. That's right. Well, he lost his high. That sucks. What does the retinal log do? Play this card next to a hero. The hero next to this card is augmented during their play phase. That hero may play an additional card. Solid. It's pretty damn solid. Anybody want to play an additional card? I mean... Not particularly? I don't know. Did she play an additional card? Arm yourself, too. From the trash, put one into play and one into your hand. Interesting. Play this card next to a target. Whenever that target would take damage, redirect that damage to the knight. Damage redirected this way is irreducible. That sucks. The knight gains the power. Power destroyed the knight's honor. Hmm. So it's basically just I will shield you. Which is normally fine. But uh, not so fine now. Swift Strikes could be fine, too. Or just being able to find... Oh, it's only for... It's only searching your deck, though. You can't search your trash. Although, technically, I could just do Arm myself. Right? Actually, no. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and augment her as well. <laughs> I mean, she's just gonna get all the augments. It's fine. This is fine. There, now she gets plate mail too. Nice. And she can play an additional card, which means she's gonna be super protected. What was that? What was that card? Initiated upgrade. Search your deck or trash for an augment card and put it into play. If you search your deck, shuffle it, and you may draw a card. I mean, that's solid. Really solid. See, I wish that their powers were better. Hmm. Him being able to regain HP would be huge. Actually, that's probably what I'm going to do. Instead of just using the uncharmed life like it is, I'm just going to destroy it and regain the HP. I think that's pretty huge. Yeah, you bought the girl's sensory chewing necklaces and straws. Oh, you did get, and end up getting them, Brooke. That's good. 
I was hoping so. I was hoping that you got your money today. Okay, so Bathale's not buffed anymore. So she can play two cards. I'm trying to think of what I want to do here. Because, yeah, I could get the sword too, but I think that's kind of pointless. Sensory, yeah. I mean, we could just take equipment from the trash, right? Because the arm yourself says to put one into play and one into your hand. I think that sounds fine. Let's play the one shot. Oh, shit. What about Mage Killer, though? It's rough. And which one do I have? I have Plate Mail, so I'm going to take the Plate Helm and put it into play. Because they're limited anyway. And I'll take the plate mail. Or maybe another plate dome? Probably plate dome. In play. The other one goes to my hand. And then I can play another card. And I actually drew this card too. Let me see what it is. Each player may draw a card or take an equipment or ongoing card from their trash and put it on top of their deck, which is pretty solid. Has three equipment or ongoing cards. Cyphers has one. Setbacks has three. And Knights has two. Hmm. I don't think I want to play another one shot. I think what I want to do is play... The plate mail. Get her super protected. Well, I guess I could have just done with that with Maiden's Blessing. That was dumb. I didn't want to do another one shot. I really didn't. And I've got no equipment that I can play with Maiden's Blessing. But it says you may. So I can still use that power to draw a card. Definitely heal. And use the Maiden's Blessing just to draw a card. Yep, no playable equipment cards. That's fine. Just draw a card. Another Maiden's Blessing. I mean, not really what I was looking for. That's fine. Sure footing. That's how you may play a one-shot, man. Uh oh Uh-oh, what the hell is that? Does this say something about players may not play cards? Players may not play cards that share a keyword with the last hero card that entered play. Oh, that's rough. At the start of the environment turn, if no hero cards entered play this round, destroy this card. Oh, God. That sucks. Keywords on the last hero played were equipment and limited. Oh god. The last hero card that entered play. Oh man, that sucks. That's really rough. And the only way to get rid of it besides hacking it is by not playing cards at all. That's super horrible. I wonder if anybody has any cards that I can get rid of. We don't need two bait and switches, that's for sure. Let me see what else we got here. Networked attack might be pointless. I don't really need a Maiden's Blessing either. Because I already have that, so... Let's get rid of that Maiden's Blessing. And Setback can probably get rid of the Reckless Rush. And, yeah, Networked Attack is not great. Let's just get rid of them all. This is probably going to be bad. Yeah, it's going to be rough.
Luckily, none of the gins are gonna die. At least just yet. Man, it's so much damage. Okay, good. At least the stalwart shield is helping. Hmm. Do I have another plate helm in her hand? I do. Yeah, that's probably fine. Let's try and keep her at least a little healthy. This might end up coming down to last hero standing kind of thing. Damn, it's another one shot. Where are your goddamn traces, you piece of shit? Oh, wait. No, if we flip him again, he has four traces, and then he will not flip again. What is this? Rift Blade Strikes. Deals the non-villain target with the second highest HP, two fire damage. Deals the non-villain target with the highest HP, four melee damage. Oh, okay, so at least this thing is gonna get absolutely fucked. Cool. Yeah, kill the hell out of that traitor. Yes, please. That is a lot of damage. I'm really glad it took it all. Because that was really bad. Yeah, this is going to suck. Yeah, these are the two targets. Oh my god. And then nobody has any HP. This is going to be terrible. Going to be terrible. Yep. Night. I guess you're just gonna have to take the plate mail damage. Which will only be three, which is not too bad. Oh my god. And Mage Killer's gonna hit me too. I guess that's just gonna kill my plate mail too. Because I can't have it hit me. That'd be four damage, I think. It'll only do three damage to the plate mail. I have to. Yep. Man. That is rough. And now everybody just has to take one damage. Well, that fucks over my... My gins. Well, no, Bathiel won't die. He'll just lose his high form. Yep. She's dead. I couldn't get her high form out. Not that she's actually dead, but you know. They come back to the hand. Oh god damn it. Yeah, everybody's gonna take two damage, that's right, because of stupid crusader. Oh my god. Yeah, we're we're doomed. That's good to know that even when fans make stuff, they still make it ridiculously stupid and shitty. And unbalanced and broken. Man. What do I even do here? You may use a power now? I don't care about... You may put a gin from your trash into play or draw two cards. Hmm. Interesting. I kind of hate this charger too that I have. Really? Is it bad, DJ? And one character regains two HP. I mean, it's a one shot though, so somebody's gonna take damage. But I think I have to play friendly advice. Yeah, I don't think I have a choice. I've got to play friendly advice. God damn it, you piece of shit. All this irreducible damage is fucking pissing me off. One character regains two HP. I think it's got to be set back because he's basically dead. And then what is it? One player may draw a card? Uh... Hmm. 
I'm gonna let Cypher draw. Because he has, like, nothing. And so I'm really hoping that he's gonna be able to figure something out. One player may put a card from their trash on top of their deck. That, I don't know what I want. Maybe the knight? Because she has so many equipment cards in there. Yeah, that could work. Grab that plate mail. I mean, it's it's the only thing that's protecting her right now. I know it only protects her for one round, but it's still something, at least. He's gonna really suck when it comes to flipping over, too. Because then he gets that stupid bullshit where reduce the first damage dealt to Outlander each turn by four. It's gonna be ridiculous. That means if we can only do one damage per turn, it, it's it's gonna do zero. You have to do more than one instance of damage. It doesn't stay there sometimes. It comes out really easy. Oh, that's not good. You definitely don't want that. Let me see if I can find something better here. Hmm. I think I'm just going to take High Reshiel. Play a gin now. That's kind of interesting. This is by Bathiel. Well, I'm definitely dealing the Outlander damage for sure. It means he's gonna get countered, which is fine. Bathiel will still stay alive. And then Reshiel can kill that. Good, I'm glad that's gone, because that's a piece of shit. And deal damage to him. And Reshiel still should stay alive, because there should be no counter. Yeah, there's no counter. Okay. It's just the first time. It's good. What was that? Oh, you can't play anything. Because he played a one-shot. That's right. Fucking sucks. I guess I'll just use Hacking Program. It's not going to be good. He's going to do two damage to himself, basically killing himself, but I'm getting rid of this Lonely Calling because it's trash. What was that? You may have one Augment in play next to the... next to a new hero. Draw two cards. Discard a card. What? Oh, you may move one augment and play next to a new hero. Draw two cards and discard a card. I mean, it's fine. Not great, but it's, I guess it's fine. There's silver lining. Okay, I may have to just play out silver lining. I think I'm going to have to. And then try and stack up as many tokens as possible, because I think I think he's gonna die. Do some damage. He's gonna take some damage back, but at least it does damage. And it gives him tokens, which means he might. Because he's gonna die here, right? Thank God for silver lining. Yes. Sets his HP to seven. Okay, that was probably definitely worth it. That was a decent hell heal. Four is pretty decent. All right, what do we do here? What's the play? Each player may draw a card or take an equipment or ongoing card from their trash and put it on top of their deck. I mean, it's a one shot, so it's probably not worth playing. There's so many freaking one shots. You may play a one-shot now, draw a card. I don't... It'd be great if there wasn't Mage Killer out, but Mage Killer is going to kill us. 
if I'm not careful. A one shot too, though. Use damage dealt to that target by one. At least he does everything with highest HP. So if I'm smart, maybe I can play this. Oh. Never mind. Doesn't happen first. It, his stupid counter happens immediately. Great. So what do I want to put in play? Because I have Plate Helm. I don't have my Plate Mail. I'll put that into play immediately. Reduce damage they take. Oh yeah, well, I guess I'll just do me. I was dumb. I was hoping I could reduce the damage that they were going to take from the stupid counter mage killer, but no. Fucking mage killer. Plate down. Okay. Okay, she's super armored up now. She still has a plate mail, too. Can't actually play it, though, but she can draw a card with Maid's Blessing, so that's fine. Get that healing. And Maiden's Blessing to draw a card. Fine. Plate Mail. God, where's my sword? Even though it doesn't matter. Even if I did have a sword, it wouldn't matter. I can't do any damage. Because she doesn't have any actual way of dealing damage with that's not one-shots. Atheum Rage? Uh-oh. That doesn't seem good. What? He regained 4 HP? You bullshit piece of fuck. When this card enters play, the villain target with the highest HP regains 4 HP and deals the two non-villain targets with the highest HP 3 radiant damage each. Oh, good! Good. That is very good. And he's buffed, too. So that's just fantastic. Yep, I have to. It should at least end up being three damage. Yeah, that's good. Four to him, which means he's basically dead again. Wow, he's kind of bullshit, isn't he? He's kind of a little bit bullshit. Does this say you can do this at any time? If there are ever this many, this card deals one target. No, it just does that. I mean, that means 12 cards, right? And it already has eight cards under it. So if we do it again, we can do 15 damage to him. I kind of wanted to do it to the other side, but I don't, I don't think it's possible. I mean, it is, but it would be reduced by four, which is not what I'm hoping for. Guess we can do it, probably. I'm trying to think of how I want to do this, though. That vision could be good, though. I don't want to get rid of my high ones, that's for sure. I'll just get rid of the bait and switch, because I don't think that's going to really help all that much. Yeah, it's not super useful. Because his power is not the greatest. And Cypher, what is this? Rebuilt to succeed. Select two augments in your trash. Put one in your hand and one into play. The hero, you augment this way may play a card now. I mean, it doesn't really matter. He doesn't have any in his trash. And that could be useful. You could actually heal her a little bit. Man. God, 
think I'm just gonna get rid of this one. Get rid of Reckless Rush, because you'll just die if you use it. And the Knight can get rid of... I mean, Swift, Swift Strikes probably isn't the greatest. Sure Footing probably was a better one. And now he takes 15 Radiant damage. Bringing him almost down to zero. Dragonborn reacts. But it can't because it has no life. Ha! Wait, the super weapon still stays there? We can use it again? Knight's Hatred? Well, that seems bad. What does that do? Yeah, that's Captain Cosmic, I think. Increased damage dealt by Outlander by one. Reduced damage dealt to Outlander by one. At the start of the villain turn, destroy this card. Oh, good. Good, so I'm just gonna, like, straight up die. That's great. That's always fun. Man, I am super fucked. And I have no idea what his fourth trace is, either. Like, we're already having a bad time. He's dead. Does that mean all the djinns are dead, too? I bet they are. And this guy is supposed to be one of the easier bosses? Are you fucking kidding me, dude? I mean, it fits right in with the game, I'll tell you. The bosses in this game are bullshit. You are very lucky if you win, even on, like, the easiest mode. See? We're super fucked. Super fucked, super dead. Honestly, there was nothing I could do about it, though. Besides die. Unless the knight can somehow pull this out all by herself. Maybe she can? Because she can get buffed by the other guys. May destroy one ongoing card. I mean, it's going to destroy itself anyway. One player may reveal the top two cards of their deck, discard one, and replace the other. I mean, this is probably fine, though. I'm just going to get rid of it. It is going to destroy itself, but it's much better to just get rid of it now. Because it is buffing him, and that's not good. One player may destroy one of their ongoing cards to draw three cards. One player may destroy one of their equipment cards to play three cards. Or one target regains one HP. I mean, that sounds pretty tight to me. Healing, please. I don't know what setback can do, but they're all dead. Discard the top card of every deck. One player may draw a card. One hero may use a power. You know what? I'm going to do that. Use your power. Regain HP. Actually, maybe this will work. Because she can regain a shitload of HP. Oh, she lost the augments. Fuck. Well, that's bad. That's pretty bad. And she can't do any damage either, except for one-shots, and that's just gonna hit her. That is really bad. And now she's the only target, too. Does this change any? No, it's still 12. I'll never be able to use that again. I mean, I guess let's just flip him. I suppose. Here, I'll put some plate mail on. And then... No, I guess I'm not going to flip him, am I? Damn it, that's not what I meant to do. But I do need the armor, so I guess it's fine. Play an equipment card here. Get the plate helm on. Another sure footing. I have to hope and pray that this event card, or this event deck, is just going to do something that destroys him. More swift strikes. super useful. Please? Oh, it's going to do damage to him, I think. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals one other target 
Free Sonic Damage. Increase damage dealt by a target damaged this way by one until the start of the next environment turn. Oh. So you... I could do it to myself. But no. I guess I'll just do it to him. It'll at least flip him. So what's this fourth trace? I just want to see it. There it is, Archangel. Seems really bad. Dragonborn reacts, gonna burn him. And he buffed his bird. That's amazing. No, there's there's no reason. What does this do? First time Outlander is dealt four or more damage from a single source each turn. Play the top card of the villain deck. At the end of the villain turn, Outlander deals each non-villain target one irreducible projectile damage. Great. Good. That is definitely death. There's no reason to put any cards on that. There's the anchored fragment again. Good. Really good. And three damage. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just... Fuck me up, dude. Break all my armor like you always do. Yep, it's gonna be 100% broken, pretty much. Oh, wait. Oh, hell yeah, he's gonna use Crusader. Crusader's effect on Talon Brosk, at least. Thank God. Yeah, kill him. Yeah, you take the damage first, bitch. Get out of here, you piece of shit. At least he flipped him. That was good. I'm completely fucked, though. Definitely 100% fucked. There is no way I'm winning. Unless I can somehow just keep putting out armor and hope the events kill him. The, the environment kills him. But I doubt it. He's way too goddamn strong. And he's supposed to be one of the lower difficulty bosses. I don't even want to see a higher difficulty boss. Then again, then again, Cypher sucks. Like, Cypher's horrible. This guy's pretty good. One player may draw a card now. Do you have anybody that says that you can play a card? You may destroy one ongoing card? Oh, fuck yes. Get rid of that goddamn anchor fragment. Good. That works for me. Works for me. To play three cards? I mean... Something to that. But I think she's just gonna have to keep healing. There's no way she's gonna make it, though. It's definitely impossible. One player may play a card, he use a power... So she could heal herself, or she could just play a card. I mean, if she plays a one-shot, she's fucking dead anyway. And that's... that's... pretty much all there is. Good. I guess use a power. I guess. Technically, I could have had her use the power that got her the armor on. It's probably fine, though. Where is my damn sword? Not that it matters. Like I said, if she does any damage, she's dead. Period. Because he will counter, and he's just going to kill her. Like, she's done for. Well, I tried. I tried. That, that's that's all you can do is try, right? There's my sword. Not that it matters. Oh, wait. It does give her a power to do melee damage. That's right. Not that it's going to matter at all. 
it doesn't matter one little bit. Because even if she can do the one damage to him, it, it's always going to be blocked. Unless she can do five damage? Then she could hit him 20 times, technically. Assemble the council was destroyed, okay. What does this other thing do? Starlight of Zek. The end of the environment turn, this card deals the villain target with the lowest HP, three toxic damage. Then if Atheum Cannon is in play, put the top card of one hero deck beneath it. Oh, really? That's kind of interesting. Okay, you have me intrigued. I shall put cards underneath it then. Did he just try to do damage to him? And it did no damage? Uh oh, that's an ongoing. Another anchored fragment? Bullshit. God, that's such stupid horseshit. Why does he get to draw so many goddamn cards? Piece of shit. And another card? Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, I guess I'm just dead, right? Another disarming blow. Great. Well, you're taking the hit first, you piece of shit. And there goes my armor. Again. I literally can't keep it out. It's impossible. It just doesn't have enough health. He does so much goddamn damage, too. What is this? Why is this a fucking ongoing? When this card enters play, search the villain deck for a copy of Anchored Fragment and put it into play. Oh, good, good. Shuffle the villain deck and play its top card. Yeah, good, good. Damage dealt by the Outlander is irreducible. Oh, good, good. Started the villain turn, destroy this card. Yeah. I mean, this never gets destroyed. Great. Yeah, definitely. S super, super fair. Super, super fair. Totally 100% fair. I guess since this is going to destroy itself, I'm going to try and destroy the anchored fragment. That is if I even live. Oh, I don't live. Good. Thank God. Thank you for putting me out of my goddamn misery, finally. That fucking fight took like two goddamn hours. And what happened? I failed. Wow. You are some supreme horseshit, you piece of shit. But then again, I'm not surprised. Did I think that players were going to do better at making stuff than the stupid developers that don't know balance in the first place? No. Not really. But she is supposed to be a difficulty one, so maybe she's actually beatable. So this is not going to be a whole lot of stuff. Yeah, there she is. That was the one I was telling uh, Brooke about last night. How she looks very alien-esque. And see, she does have a variant, which makes her a little bit more difficult. But they picked this one, so let's try this. What is this difficulty? Two? Or complex three, complex three, two, one, and three. Oh, good. Yeah, so this is going to be a complex one, but hopefully maybe we'll be able to actually freaking win. That'd be nice. She's cool looking. Do you feel it coming in the air? My art now knows no boundaries. It is the time to be fighting. This is a... This is a thing I am not bad at. Very much the opposite. Oh, look at how many people we have. Lots. Alright, so what is she all about? She starts with outside lines, or outside the lines. Search the deck for all copies of Painted Viper and Stained Wolf. Place them beneath this card and shuffle the villain deck. Cards beneath this one have no game text or not in play. The end of the villain turn, if there are no cards beneath this one, flip her character card. 
Otherwise, put two random cards from beneath this one into play. Okay. So there are going to be the both of the Stained Wolf and the Painted Viper. Then she's going to flip. Like, immediately, pretty much? Because it says put two random cards from beneath this one into play. I think she's going to flip, literally, like, next turn. Okay. That should be interesting. The tattoo. Okay. Plays two random cards, yep. There's the Stained Wolf. And the other one's going to be the Viper. Oh! Never mind. It's not just two cards. Never mind. Never mind. They're both Stained Wolves. Okay. Gotcha. Increased damage dealt by villain targets by one. At the end of the villain turn, this card deals each hero target one Sonic damage. Well, I'll just get fucked then. It's going to be two. Nothing you can do about it. Villains always go first. Which is super unfair. You know, and I think that might be one of the reasons why this game sucks more than some of the other ones. God damn, why did that do so much damage? Oh, good. Yeah, it's just because that stained wolf does fucking ridiculous amounts of damage to the person with the highest HP, which is definitely her. Of course. She always has like 40 HP or something like that. Alright, Skyscraper. Draw two cards. Very solid. Destroy any number of link cards. Yeah, I don't have any link cards. Reveal cards from the top of your deck until two link cards have been revealed. You may put each of those either into your hand or into play. Shuffle the other revealed cards into your deck. Hmm. Rest and recover. Switch to normal. Regains one HP. Draw one card and move one card other than rest and recover from your trash to your hand. Wow, regains one HP? Man. They are super, super nice about recovering HP, aren't they? No, fucking when you recover one H or when you recover HP, it's always one HP, like all the damn time, pretty much. If you recover two, that's like super, super good HP recovery. But the villains, I mean, they they can recover like eight. Who cares? Who cares at all? They're they're way overpowered. There is zero balance in this game. It's all about fucking luck. Switch to the huge character card. Deals one target, four melee damage. Deals one target, one projectile damage. I mean... Not bad. Actually, not bad at all. I would love to destroy this Shaded Owl because it's doing... It's buffing everything. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And she's big now, too. What can she do when she's big? Oh, yeah, the concussive clap. Which is not great. Although it does say zero sonic damage. So if she doesn't buff herself, then everybody else takes no damage. So that's fine. Yeah, definitely beat the crap out of this owl. I don't like it. It has way too much HP, too. Way too much HP. Oh, and then all the rest of these, I think, are just going to take zero. Wait, what? Oh, the projectile damage. Right. That'll go to you, too, you piece of shit. And then all the ones that are going to take sonic damage. Wait. Oh, deals each target one projectile damage. Uh oh. Whoopsie doodle. I thought it said that it just dealt one other target, one projectile damage. I guess everybody's just taking damage. It's fine. I guess it kind of makes sense. The way it is, is basically, hey, I'm taking this target, I'm choke slamming it into the ground, and then everybody else is taking damage from the fragments of the ground. It definitely makes sense from that kind of standpoint. And yeah, you'll use your power. 
it should be fine. So what does it do again? Deals each non-hero target two sonic damage, which is totally solid. And then every other target, or every other hero target, takes zero sonic damage. Which could be buffed if you're not careful. But you can see that every single one of these is going to be zero, unless there's a... Okay, good. There's no, no nemesis. So it's all just going to be zero. Whatever, just... Whatever. There. Good. Proportionist. That was that one I accidentally played when I didn't want to. Oh my god, the downpour immediately feels good. Play up to three cards. Each time you play a card this way, the environment deals Tempest three lightning damage. Interesting. But I'm definitely getting that downpour down. This is like one of the best powers in the game. Cleansing downpour. Every hero gains two HP. Huge. If she ever has any way of destroying ongoings, though, I'm going to cry. Flash Flood. Okay. Destroy some environment cards. That's good. I have not played as Parse in a long time. Doesn't she? Yeah, she just does, like, straight-up damage. Her power is solid. If there are two or more villain ongoing cards in play, you may destroy one of them. If there are two or more environment cards in play, you may destroy one of them. I mean, that's super solid. Reveal the top three cards of your deck. Put one on the bottom of your deck and the, and the other two in your hand. Also very solid. Syntactic analysis. Hey, look, I can. I think I can name all of these guys. I think that's Knife. There's Writhe. That's Naturalist. That's mainstay i think idealist uh dr medico setback and parse oh so it's all the all the sentinels are here because there's writhe mainstay idealist and dr medico neat select a player that player reveals the top two cards of their deck they may play draw or discard each of those cards in any order hmm that's not bad it just says select a player. It doesn't say select another player. What's targeting arrow? Parse deals one target, one irreducible projectile damage. Increase damage dealt to that target by one until the start of your turn. I mean, that's also pretty solid. I really want to get that Shaded Owl down, so I think I am going to play that. I'm going to play it on the Shaded Owl. Do the damage. Then she can totally use her power. Also, if you ever forget, you can click this and you can see that increased damage dealt to Shaded Owl by one. It even lets you know how it's happening if you click it. It's pretty cool. Pretty nice. That means she can actually do three damage to it with her power instead of two. That's pretty solid. Parse is an okay hero. This is supposed to be one of the hardest bosses. Let's see if we can actually figure out how to play her. Okay, what is this? Deals herself up to four psychic damage. Draw X cards and discard X cards where X equals the amount of damage. Move any number of primordial seeds from your trash to the environment trash. Okay. Kind of dangerous, though. Top of the environment deck. Heals herself on one target. One, or X toxic damage. Where's the number of cards discarded? I hate the fact that she keeps dealing herself damage, too. That sucks. Everything she does, she deals herself damage. Either draw a card or play a card. Each Primordial Seed in play deals one target, one toxic damage. Pretty solid. Either draw a card or play a card? Hmm. I guess I'll do the Scatter Seeds.
and just do four. But I really need to get those seeds out. Oh, this could be bad, though. What if I don't draw any seeds? Oh my god, none of these are seeds. None of them are seeds. Wow. Dreadful. We'll definitely throw that in there. It's the worst. Accelerate nature's order. Play the top three cards in the environment deck. When you play a non-target card this way. Heals herself one psychic damage and destroys an environment card. When you play a target this way, that target deals one target three toxic damage. I mean, that's... That is pretty freaking solid. I think I understand it. Why does she always hurt herself? Every goddamn card hurts herself. Except for maybe cultivation. Yeah, that doesn't actually hurt herself. Search your deck for a primordial seed. Put it on top of the environment deck. Shuffle your deck. Play the top card in the environment deck. Either play a card or shuffle the environment trash into the environment deck. Well, that's interesting. So this is like... That's really good. I want to keep that. Whenever seed is destroyed, you may move it to the environment trash. Whenever a hero target would be dealt damage by an environment card, you may redirect the damage to a primordial seed. Damn, that's also pretty solid. Damn. Well, I'll definitely get rid of Rapid Growth. I think I need Scatter Seeds, though. I mean, Cultivation also works. This card will play the top card of the environment deck. Well, actually, it doesn't really do it. I pull either one card or all cards from the environment trash into the environment deck. This card will play the top card of the environment deck. I mean, that's not super useful. Still have to trash one more. Damn it, I don't want to trash any of these though. I guess I'll just trash the scatter the seeds, I guess. Select a card to put in the trash. That one. <laughs> the one card. I was really hoping to draw more seeds. There's no primordial seeds in play, which sucks. I could play another card. Wait, what does this do again? Deals herself two psychic damage. Search your deck for a primordial seed. Put it on top of the environment deck. It's literally just take a seed and put it into play. That sounds tight. So I think I'm going to play a card. That sounds super good because I've never actually had a primordial seed in play. Ever. Play a card. Boom. Now we just have to figure out what primordial seed we want to put in play. What does this do? When this card is played from the environment deck, one hero target regains 4 HP. When this card is destroyed, draw a card, and each hero target regains 1 HP. So this only works when it's played, right? But it is technically also a blocker. When this card is played, it deals that. Oh, I mean, they, they don't just sit there and do damage. You may discard any number of cards. Draw as many cards as you discard this way, plus one. Yeah. Not great. In the environment deck, select up to three targets. Reduce damage dealt by those targets by two until the next turn. I mean, that's solid. Strangling Roots is very solid. You may destroy one environment card or a target with three or fewer HP. I mean, that's very solid, actually. Vitalized Thorns is also very good, I think. If this card was not played from the environment deck, destroy it. Whenever a hero target deals damage to her, this card deals that target one melee damage. 
it first deals... If it's destroyed, it first deals one target three projectile damage. I mean, it's decent. But honestly, I think I'm going to go with the Strangling Roots. I think they're great. Select the first target. So three targets, huh? Do you do any damage? She technically doesn't do any damage herself right now. So you know what? These are all my targets. If they're going to do damage to me, they're going to do less damage. Good. Perfect. And it's by two, too. And then what is this? Shuffle the environment trash into the environment deck. Or play a card. Hold on a second. So it does say that the Strangling Roots is out. I guess it doesn't technically put it up in the environment, which is kind of confusing. Or maybe you can play these even not from the environment deck and it just gives you like another blocker. And technically they do get the destroyed thing, even if you play it. But when you play it from the environment deck, that's when you get the really bonus from it. It's kind of cool. Whenever Primordial Seed is destroyed, you may move it to the environment trash, which is kind of cool. Whenever a hero target would be dealt damage by an environment card, you may direct that damage to a Primordial Seed. That's huge. And destroys the environment card, or when a when you play a target this way, that target deals one target three toxic damage, which is really good. Kind of scary though. I think I think I'm gonna go with the play a card, and I'm just gonna play this one. It's very safe. Wait, what? Oh yeah, each primordial seed in play deals one target, one toxic damage. I only have one seed, so guess who's getting it? Stupid Shaded Owl. He even takes one more damage. Good. Because of the uh, aiming or whatever, Thrashing Brambles. Hmm. Okay. I've never actually been able to play her primordial seeds, so hopefully it'll be super fun. See what this magnificent Mara is about. I've heard that Mara is not good. Magnificent Mara deals one target, one psychic damage. That target deals another target, one melee damage. I mean, that seems pretty, pretty freaking solid to me. What is this? Look, looking for this. One player may return one of their non-character cards in play to their hand. If they do, they may select a card in their trash that shares a keyword with that card and put it into play. Interesting. Mix it up. Destroy one hero ongoing card, equipment card, or environment card. If you do, reveal the top two cards of the associated deck. Put one into play and discard the other. Not very good. Mystical Enhancement. Play this card next to a card with a power on it. Increase damage dealt by that power by one. If that card would be destroyed, destroy this card instead. Okay. Post Hypnotic Q. Play this card next to a hero. When this card is destroyed, that hero may use a power. At the start of your turn, you may destroy this card. I mean, that's pretty solid. not bad at all she doesn't seem incredibly useful so far these cards are just kind of meh and I don't really understand what a power is I guess this must be one of her things oh 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 no no never mind I, I get it I get it it's a power of course which I think technically means you could play this on any card that has a power. Increase damage dealt by that power by one. Hmm. Interesting. But if I was to put it on her, then she would actually do people damage, sonic damage to everybody or all non or all heroes. So I think I'm just gonna go with the. Uh, Post hypnotic Q here. Right, what was this again? 
Play this card next to a hero. When this card is destroyed, that hero may use a power. Probably fine. I was thinking of playing it to her, because her powers are really good. Wait, when did it say that I could destroy that? At the start of your turn, you may destroy this card. Interesting. I can't really do anything about it right now. Deals one target, one psychic damage, and that target deals another target, one melee damage. So I guess it doesn't really matter too much. Right? Because nobody's buffed, right? Oh wait, they are buffed, aren't they? Damage dealt by villain targets by one. Yeah, that's pretty good. That means if they deal another damage, I can kill the Shaded Owl. Actually, I can just kill the Shaded Owl anyway. Because I just use her power and do enough damage to kill the Shaded Owl. See? It's dead. But, we could do better. Because this one is dead. If it dies, then the other target doesn't take one melee damage. So, why don't we just target a Stained Wolf? It'll only do one damage. But then if I'm correct, this should end up being two. Oh no, the Strangling Roots, that's right. Uh, huh. Okay, hold on. Then I'll change it up a little bit. And what we'll do instead, because she wasn't lowered of her damage, so why don't we psychic her? Do one damage to her, and then she'll do a shitload of damage to this thing. Oh, she'll do even more because of the targeting arrow. She's buffed by the Shaded Owl and the targeting arrow, so yeah. Just, just kill the hell out of that thing. Good. Thank you for killing your own tattoo. I appreciate that. Appreciate that a lot. Oh, holy shit. Was that the Scholar? I think that was the Scholar in that picture. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what the fuck is this? Increase damage dealt by environment targets by one. At the end of the environment turn, each player may discard a card. Any player that discards a card this way may use each power printed on a character card in their play area. Hmm. Really? Well, that's interesting. Hmm. I don't think I want to use Tempests. But everybody else's power is totally solid. Skyscraper? What would you discard, though? Probably just the Explosive Reveal. Don't really need it. It's kind of clunky. Select the first hero to use their power. That would be her, yeah. For it. Concussive Clap! Blast them all. Boom. Boom. And boom. Solid. And then everybody else should take zero damage, I think. She won't even do any damage to this. No, yeah, straight up. Everybody's fine. Good. Oops. I didn't do choose for me. My bad. Fast forward. There we go. I don't think I like Tempest's power that much. Like, I don't like this Tempest power. Each time we play a card this way, he, the environment deals Tempest 3 lightning damage. Which wouldn't do more damage. But, I mean, there's not really any cards I want him to play right now, so, nah. Tempest, you're going to be skipped. But Parse... Hell yeah. Was there something in here that I didn't like? I mean, that's super good. Reveal the flaws. 
Damage dealt by hero targets is irreducible. Start of your turn, destroy this card. I mean, it's probably not that necessary. Damn it, these are like super good though. I guess I'll just go for Reveal the Flaws, because I really want to use her power again too. Pinpoint shot! Now, unfortunately, it's only going to do two damage, so let's just kill this wolf. Well, not kill it, but attack it. And then, do I want to use her power? Hold on, I'm trying to think. She said it's either you can draw a card or you can play a card? What was the Thrashing Brambles? Increased damage dealt by Primordial Seeds by one. Heals herself and up to X targets, two melee damage and two toxic damage each, where X equals the number of primordial seeds in play plus one. Pretty solid. But I could use her power again, play this, and then that primordial seed does two damage? Instead of one? Or play that one, but I don't know if I really want to do that. That's kind of scary, actually. Because it means I could get a lot of uh, environment cards coming out. Actually, it's probably still fine, right? I think? Because I've got ways of destroying the environment, too. Just in case something really bad comes out. I mean, just getting the Primordial Seeds buffed up, I think, is better. Sure. Yeah, so I'll just discard this one. And use her power. Play a card. And now each primordial seed in play does deals one target, one toxic damage, so which is gonna be two toxic damage. So I'm just gonna kill the hell out of you. I know it's a little bit more damage than needed, but it's fine. We want to get rid of these things. And then we can definitely do Mara's as well. Mara just has bad cards. So, wait, what was this? Power. Reveal the top card of each other hero deck. One player may put their revealed card into their hand or into play. Replace or discard the other revealed cards. If a card is put into play this way, destroy this card. I mean, it's not great, but it's also not terrible. I don't know if I like Mix It Up either. I actually don't like this one either. They are right, though. They were saying that... Mara's just a bad character because they were they were fan made. They weren't made by the person who did the cauldron. They were like, like a Patreon kind of thing or something. And people are just like Mara's a bad character. I'm gonna try psychicking her again so that I can do two damage to the wolf. Wait, oh no, that's right. Yeah, never mind. Don't have the wolf anymore, or I mean the owl. No, I don't think I really want Tempest to play any cards. I don't want him to take a shitload of damage. That would be bad. Obsidian Skin. Reduce damage dealt to Dend Dendron by one. Gross. That's pretty bad. There's a Stained Wolf. And a Viper this time? Yep, Painted Viper. Whoa. This is bad. Ah, oh, nice, yes. Strangling roots are useful. Ouch. Three toxic damage. Okay. Oh no, strangling roots! It was destroyed! Okay, what is this in here? Whenever it is destroyed, you may move it to the environment trash. And when this is destroyed, you may destroy one environment card or a target with three or fewer HP. Do I have a target with three or fewer HP? Oh, I do! 
Oh, sure. Let's do that first. I could destroy the, the environment card, too, but I think it's fine. At least for the time being, I think it's fine. I'd rather destroy this stained wolf here. Bye. Do you want to move strangling trash to the environment trash? I mean, strang <laughs> strangling roots. Uh, yes? Is there ever time you wouldn't want to do that? Wouldn't you love to just put them right back in there so that they can possibly be used again? Your trash to your hand. I mean, I could do tectonic slam, Gary. Choke slam. That was a really good, really good card. Man, these things have so much HP. So I guess what she's going to do is she's going to keep painting, right? Until she has nothing left to paint. And then when there's nothing left under the game, or under her, you flip her, right? If at the end of the villain turn, if there are no cards beneath this one, flip her. At the end? That's weird. And when she flips... At the start of the villain turn, destroy a villain ongoing card. If you do, Dendron deals each hero target two radiant damage. Okay. Whenever a tattoo would be destroyed, place it beneath this card. Oh god, she's gonna take him back then. At the start of the villain turn, if there are at least six tattoos beneath this card, Dendron deals herself ten toxic damage. Then flip Dendron's villain cards. Okay. Or her character card. Okay. So she can do herself a ton of damage if you kill her tattoos. Interesting. When Skyscraper's character card is switched to a larger size, Skyscraper deals each non-hero target one melee damage. When it's switched to a smaller size, draw a card. And increase Sonic damage dealt? I mean, that does mean she would have to deal damage to the heroes too. But we could probably take it. I think we're fine. Yeah, let's do the proportionist. And use the power. It'll do more damage to them than it does to us. Go. Good stuff. Now, unfortunately, it does mean that everybody else is gonna have to take one damage. That freaking obsidian skin, man. Now, luckily, I don't think anybody gets... Yeah, nobody takes extra damage, so that's good. It depends upon if they're Nemesis or something like that. Which can happen, because there are... ...bosses that become heroes, which is very strange, but it's true. It's probably fine. I also remember that... Akasha, or whatever her name is, she has the tree. Impulsion canister, I don't think I've ever seen that before. What'd you get? You got Flash Blood, which is decent. All you have, though? Like, I hate these cards. Although, the Obsidian skin does suck. But you know what? I'm gonna play into the stratosphere. I'm gonna get rid of that Obsidian skin forever. Goodbye. Good. And do more heals. I freaking love cleansing downpour. It's so good. Has to be one of the best powers in this game. Hands down. Just the fact that you can heal all your heroes to each is amazing. Doesn't seem like much, but man, that's amazing. It really is super good. Nope, data mining again. If there are two or more villain ongoing cards, nah, there was only one. If there are two or more environment cards, you can destroy one of them. There's only one, so it doesn't really matter. Reveal the top cards of your deck, put one on the bottom of your deck, and the two in your hand. Select a player, that player reveals the top two cards of their deck. They may play, draw, or discard each of these cards, those cards in any order. Kind of want to play that. I think I'm going to go for Akash. 
Yes, they're both seeds. Perfect. Isn't that perfect? Wait, hold on. Does she have any way of getting those into the environment deck? Oh, she has no cards. Well, that's pretty bad. What are they, though? When this card is destroyed, it would it would first do three projectile damage. Yeah, if this was not played from the environment deck, destroy it. That sucks. So you can't play this without it being um, from the environment deck. You could play this one, though. When it's destroyed, either destroy an ongoing or environment card or discard a card. Hmm. Oh, man, I really love this, though. I guess it makes sense to just discard both of them? Right? I could draw it, too, but I think discarding it makes the most sense. Just discard both of them. Seems like it was pointless, but she has ways of getting stuff from the discard and putting it into the... The environment trash. I think that would be fantastic. I am going to get rid of the Stained Wolf because I think it does more damage. It does much more damage. Impossible shot at Sam's Gate! <laughs> and she has no cards to play. That sucks. This is a power, right? Deals herself up to... Herself and up to X targets two melee damage and two toxic damage each. Where X equals the number of primordial seeds in play plus one. I mean, I guess she could do it just as one, but that seems kind of dumb. Oh, wait, no, that's X targets. So it'd just be two melee damage and two toxic damage, but to both of them, which is not great. I think I'm just going to draw a card. It's Creeping Mold. Another Primordial Seed, of course. Ah, yes. Good. That's what I was hoping to grab. You want to destroy Post-Hypnotic Q? Uh, yes. Hold on a second. So she's the one that has it, and she could immediately use a power on her character card, I think. Is that what it is? Next to a hero, when this card is destroyed, that hero may use a power. So it's any, it's just any power. But if I play this card, she deals herself psychic damage, search your deck for Primordial Seed. Okay, so you do get to search it. it means I could do Strangling Roots again. Just lowering damage. I don't know if I have another creepy mold. It deals up to three targets, two toxic damage each. I mean, that's pretty solid. Do I have? I do have a creeping mold. It's pretty solid. Yes, we'll destroy it. Hey, DJ, welcome back. Definitely use her power. I don't know what to do. What do you mean? Play a card. Play this card. You know she's going to have to do psychic damage to herself, which sucks. But we got to get more seeds in there. It's just so important. I mean, there's Noxious Pods, too. When this card is played from the environment deck, you may discard any number of cards. Draw as many cards as you discard this way, plus one. Which is good. But it's, it's, I don't think it's great. Although there's healing pollen, too. Hmm. One hero target regains 4 HP. Is that, like, necessary? Not really. We're still all kind of healthy. I almost want to say that I think that creeping mold is probably the best. Heals damage to her... This card deals that target one melee damage. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for Creeping Mold. Let's do it. It's played! So it immediately goes into play. Meaning now three targets can take two toxic damage. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh, Thrashing Brambles! Hell yeah! I didn't even think about that. The Primordial Seeds actually do more damage, which means the wolf is dead. The Viper takes three damage, and she takes three damage too, because I already got rid of her armor. Thank goodness. Hmm? Got bored from Car X because I didn't have anyone to tandem with. Oh. So I can play another card or shuffle the environment trash into the environment deck. Do I want to play another card? No, because it would just be creeping mold. I sure. I guess that's fine. Now she gets to do two toxic damage? Because she only has one primordial seed, right? Yeah, just one. Damn. Well, that's fine. We can kill the painted viper at least. Boom. That is shit. Good. She's gonna flip next turn, so that's a little scary. I don't even think she does any damage when she flips, does she? She can deal herself damage. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Here we go. Destroy a villain ongoing card. If you do, Dendron deals each hero target two radiant damage. I mean, it's scary, but she has no ongoing cards right now anyway, so maybe it's not that scary. What is this again? Some equipment. <laughs> or one environment card. If you do, reveal the top two cards of the associated deck. Put one into play and discard the other. I don't know if I like it, but I'm gonna try it. Please be a seed. Oh god, those are not seeds. Uh-oh. Which one do I put into play? Whenever this card is dealt damage, increase the next damage dealt by this card by one. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals the non-environment target with the second highest HP to toxic damage. Rose. And what about you? Bionic Patroller. The end of the environment turn, this card deals the non-environment target with the second highest HP X energy damage, where X equals the number of security cards in play plus one. That would just be two damage? He has more HP, but I, th I think he's the better one to put into play. Mara, you suck. You're terrible. Everyone is just either revved away with all gears or someone just ruining the tandem. Yeah, that's players for you, unfortunately. Unfortunately, her power is not going to be super useful here. Oh, wait. No, it'll be better than I thought. Right? I guess it doesn't really matter how I do it. I either do damage to her and she does damage to him, or I do damage to him and he does damage to her. It's fine. Doesn't really matter how you do it. Here, take melee damage from the robot. Mystical enhancement again. It's fine. I don't even know if mystical enhancement works on a character card. Codename Char? Uh oh. Well, that seems bad. Hold on a second. He's a subject. Whenever a security card enters play, this card deals each target one infernal damage. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals the hero target with the highest HP two energy damage. Then this card deals each target one infernal damage. Jesus. That's not good. Which target is considered to have the second highest HP? Um, Tempest? He hasn't taken any damage. Fuck. Oh, right. Select a target to redire redirect damage to. Or I could just not. But sure. Sure. 
I forgot about that. That's super cool. And what is this again? This card deals each target. Oh, wait, no. This card deals the hero target with the highest HP to energy damage. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. I can still just kill my seed, which is fine with me. Because when it dies, you either destroy an ongoing or an environment card or discard a card. So, sure. Die. I mean, it's not like it's doing anything anyway. Cool. Guess who's going to get destroyed then? Wait, this one. Wait, what does this do? Oh, right, right, right. Do this first. Destroy an environment card. Oh, guess what? Codename Char. I sure hope you really enjoyed doing that energy damage. Because guess what you're not going to be able to do? You're not going to be able to do your stupid one infernal damage to everybody because you did. Bitch. He dies immediately, doesn't get to do all the rest of his stuff. Which is kind of cool. And yes, I would like to do that. Ha! And that's the end of the environment turn. Just like that. Oh, not obsidian skin again. Damn it. And now she's going to put two tattoos into play. Gotcha. Another painted viper. And it's probably going to be another painted viper, I think. That it is. Thank goodness we got those stained wolves out of the way first, because, man, they were rough. Ouch. Double ouch. That sucks. Okay, what is this? Play this card next to a target. That target deals itself and one other non-hero target two irreducible psychic damage. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Hmm. It only happens once. I don't want to put it on one of the painted vipers just so that it can do its own self damage and then do damage to the other painted viper because i need to get these these tattoos out of play granted wasn't she supposed to flip already at the end of the villain turn if there are no cards beneath this one flip her character card why did she not flip Otherwise put two random... Oh, oh, because it's otherwise put two random cards beneath this one into play. Okay, never mind. So this goes first. There were cards beneath her, so they put the two random cards next turn. She's flipping. Which is probably going to be kind of scary. Although, luckily, she doesn't actually get, like, all her tattoos back or anything like that. So that's good, at least, because we killed her tattoos really quickly. Although there's still painted vipers out here. Skyscraper, I this is gonna be dangerous. But let's do it. It's gonna be rather dangerous though. I don't think there's any real special way I need to do this. Nah, just go for it. So she should do three damage to all the enemies and one damage to everybody else. Is it just hero targets that take the one damage, or is it also environment targets? Is it just non-villain? Because if so, he'll take four. No, it's just heroes. Damn. That's rough. That kind of sucks. Sometimes I thought I will let the Sog Leader know that I did the application. You, you always could. It might help. Therathian monolith? What? She's a Therathian? The fuck? I didn't know she was a Therathian. That's neat. Um. Well, I think it's just time to, like, fuck her up big time. Like, just lightning slash the hell out of her. I know she has the obsidian skin out, but that's fine. What else am I going to lightning slash besides the bionic patroller, but I don't really care about it that much. And again, 
Use the best power. Shielding wins. Do I need that? Is she a boss that does like a shitload of damage? Doesn't really feel like it. Although the wolves do. But they're already in the trash and she's already almost dead too. She is actually pretty easy, I can tell. But I don't want to be pushy too. That's true. Our steals one target, three irreducible projectile damage, and draw one card. Solid. Does the link card get destroyed? I guess it would. Let me try it out and see. No, it's still there. So that still counts as a link. Hmm. That's interesting. Because she has a thing that says destroy all links and do some damage or something like that. So I was just wondering if it was going to stay there or not. Unfortunately, I can't do three damage, but I can do two, so there you go. Try and kill those painted vipers. Snap decision? Hey, it's a smite or spite. Hmm. Okay, so if I put this into play, it wouldn't do the toxic damage and stuff. But I could use my power, and I could do two damage to the Painted Viper, killing it. I think it's worth it, honestly. I know it doesn't get to use its power or anything like that, which is too bad. I could do that too, but she would do damage to herself, and I'd rather not do that. Let's just let her draw a card. As the earth turns, what the fuck? Yeah, that's another boss. What is that card? Whenever a villain card would be played, Akash may deal herself two psychic damage. If she takes damage this way, play the top card of the environment deck instead. Start your turn to destroy this card. Hmm. Super solid. And again, this will just do two damage. Kill the hell out of that. That's why I played the Creeping Mold. Again, it's it's a it's a blocker, but it doesn't get the bonus, which is sad. But I do have the one with the land. So even if it gets destroyed, I can just throw it into the, the environment deck. I didn't even think about that. With one with the land, you can just play out all your seeds instead of discarding them. I could have put them in my hand. Played them out. They would have just been seeds, and then when they get destroyed, they go right to the environment deck. It's a great way to get them there. What does this do again? Reveal the top card of each hero's deck. Each other hero deck. And what does this one do again? It just says next to a card with a power. It doesn't say it can't be a hero. If that card would be destroyed, destroy this card instead. Wait. No, it just says increased damage dealt by that power. Hold on. I want to see if this works. Oh my god, it does work. That's fantastic. Um. There's also this one, too. But it says increased damage dealt by that power. I guess this would just be the power. This wouldn't, like, buff up the seeds even more. There's also a cautious power. But if I put it on Mara's... Does that mean she does two damage and then the other thing does two damage too? That's, that's really solid if that's true. Let me see if that works. Because if she does two damage to something and then the other thing does two damage to the other thing. Yeah, it looks like it. That is solid. That is very solid. So that's two damage to him and then he does two damage to her. 
Yeah, Mystical Enhancement. Oh, wow, good stuff. Although it's not two, it's going to be one because she has the Obsidian skin. That's fine. That is pretty damn solid. Okay. Environment turn. Another Bionic Patroller. That's bad. Now they're getting stronger. <laughs> That's not super good. Tempest? I mean, it doesn't really matter. We could just redirect it to a to a creeping, or to the seed anyway, that's fine. Oh, that means I can destroy an environment card that's fucking fantastic. And we know... Oh, I could destroy an ongoing card too, I could get rid of her obsidian skin. But we know that this guy hasn't attacked, so I'm just gonna kill him. I don't want him to attack. Get out of your bionic patroller. Yes, please. And see, when it gets destroyed, it just goes into the environment trash, which is fantastic. That means the environment deck is kind of... Oh, God, that's a shaded owl. That's bad. She flipped. Ink scar. Why did she draw two cards? Why is she drawing like a billion cards? Why are you drawing like a fuckload of cards, girl? Destroy a villain ongoing card. Okay, she hasn't even done this yet. Though technically this isn't the start of the turn, this is the end of the turn. So, why the fuck are you flipping, like, a million cards? You got the Shaded Owl. That was her first card. That makes sense. Ink Scar. Shuffle all tattoos from the villain trash into the villain deck. Play the top two cards of the villain deck. Oh! Good. And there's a bear tattoo. Great. Reduce damage dealt to this card by one. The end of the villain turn. High speed. Two melee damage. Okay. Choking Inscription. The hero with the most cards in hand cannot draw cards during their next turn. The hero with the most cards in play cannot play cards during their next turn. All other heroes shuffle their trash into their decks. I mean, I guess it's okay. Which player is considered to have the most cards in hand? They won't be able to what? Draw cards? Cards? I don't want Tempest to still keep drawing cards because he can't really do anything. Who's considered to have the most cards in play, meaning they can't play cards? Ooh, I don't know. That's that's tough to say. Is this good? That is really good. I guess skyscraper feels bad. Hmm. I'm so confused about this game. Don't even know what side you are. I'm all the heroes. This is the villain that we're fighting, and this is the environment that we're in. So the environment can sometimes help or sometimes hinder. What is this? At the end of the villain turn, this card deals each hero target one sonic damage. Well, that sucks. That's going to be two sonic damage. Nothing I can do about it. Yeah, see, this is all my heroes taking damage. You get to be, um, I think it's three to five heroes, depending upon how many you pick. It randomly picked five for me. And each hero plays differently. Ow. That wasn't very nice. Poor Skyscraper, she is getting beaten up. She can't play any cards either. That really sucks. Ugh. It's just the worst. Oh my god, these things have so much HP, too. And she's not going to destroy the obsidian skin, either. Oh, I hate it so much. This is going to suck. But I'll use Concussive Clap, because it will at least do some damage. You'll take the damage first, bro, because you're almost dead. He's down to 1 HP. And then all the rest doesn't really matter. 3 damage. 3 damage! Oh, I mean two damage, that's right. He reduces damage. Actually, that Ursa Major doesn't have much life. Only six life? This is gonna suck. 
We're just gonna take damage. You don't have a choice. <laughs> I gotta damage my own heroes. Feels bad. But Concussive Clap is so good. I might have decided to change Skyscraper's size, though. She's been huge for so long. One shot tiny? Oh, hey, that's Pars! <laughs> that was Pars in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, she couldn't use a power? Or No, she already used a power, never mind. Oh, she drew two cards. No, wait, she didn't draw two cards. Damn it. Fine. Does this only work on... Yeah, it's only on environment cards. That sucks. I can do shielding wins just for the hell of it. I don't know if it's going to be any good. And I'm definitely using downpour. Holy shit. Definitely using downpour. It's such a good power. It's so good. It is really good. And it doesn't even heal like the environment cards. It is just strict hero healing. It's so good. Okay, parse. Um, what does this do? The start of your turn, you may discard one card. If you do, you may play a card. Interesting. Segmentation fault. Power. Discard a card. If you do, you may destroy an ongoing or environment card. Damn! It's so good, because I would destroy the Obsidian Skin, but she's going to destroy that anyway. If she destroys it next turn, we take, what is it, two energy damage? Two radiant damage, each hero. I, I think I can handle it. Probably. What was this again? Reveal the top three cards of your deck, put one on the bottom and two in your hand. It's good. Yeah, I still can't use data mining at all. I mean, segmentation fault is good. She can't do any other damage, really, which is sad. Because her, her power is only going to be two projectile damage, which is not going to be great. All right, fine. Yeah, I'll take Segmentation Vault. And use this power. I'll discard Data Mining, because I don't really think it's going to come into play very much. We already have so many good ways of dealing with environment cards and dealing with their ongoings that I'm just going to get rid of this freaking Obsidian skin. I know it's going to go away, but I'd rather just not take the Radiant damage. Parse cannot draw cards. Oh, that's unfortunate. Now, let's see. Whenever a villain card would be played, may deal herself two psychic damage. Oh, that's an ongoing two? That's not a one-shot? Oh, that's huge! Sure. That means I can skip her turn as many times as I want, as long as I've got the health for it. Okay. So, what's the plan here? Draw a card? I could play the Noxious Pod, but... It first deals three targets, one toxic damage each. I mean, actually, that's pretty solid. I think I will just play that out. Select a target to be dealt damage. Um, I mean, I could kill the Bionic Patroller. What are, what are you going to kill? You're going to either attack Tempest or Mara? That's it? Like, you're not helpful, dude. You're not helping me at all, so you're dead. Get out of here, bro. He's dead. Okay, good. Earth's Attunement? Hmm. Okay. Alright, Mara. What are you doing? What is this Abracadabra one? When a non-character card belonging to another hero is destroyed, 
You may return it to that player's hand. If you do, destroy this card. When this card is destroyed, one player may play a card. I mean, that's actually pretty freaking solid. That's probably the best Mara card that I've enjoyed so far, except for Mystical... whatchamacallit. Oh shit, but it only works once? Because it's limited? That sucks. It means you can only have one out on the field. That is trash. If this wasn't limited, she would be so much better. Because she could buff all kinds of people's powers and make them do more damage. But the fact that that's limited, garbage. Um... I guess what I'll do is do some psychic damage to... And I'm trying to think of how to do this. If I do it to you, it does one damage, right? I think he's going to take one damage regardless. Oh, no, wait. Mystical Enhancement. We'll buff it up. Then they get buffed up by the Shaded Owl. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to do some damage to the Shaded Owl. Because I don't like it. And then I'm going to have the Shaded Owl hit the Ursa Major for two damage. There we go. Or sh we could hit for, for three, but I, I think I want to get rid of this Ursa Major. Kind of annoying. Very nice. Had I done it the other way, I would have only done one damage. Hey, there's uh, Absolute Zero. All right, environment, what do you got? Damn it! Draw one of my primordial seeds! Shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Shit. Hold on, there we go. At the start of the environment turn, one player may discard their hand and draw one card. If at least one card is discarded this way, the environment deck cannot play cards this turn. If at least three cards are discarded this way, also destroy all other environment cards, then destroy this card. Jesus Christ. That's kind of ridiculous. Do I want to take two psychic damage to play another environment deck? Hold on. Do I have any seeds in here? I do have seeds! I mean, they're in here! Would they be the next card? I don't even know what the next card of hers is. But yes, I'm going to do it. I don't want her to play cards. It would be super easy if she can't play cards. Oh, that's another Blast Doors! It's fine. It's fine. I can just get rid of them. Not a big deal. Wait, are you going to play another card? What? Hold on a second. At the end of the villain turn, play the top card of the villain deck. Oh, shit. I can't be making her take too much damage. Okay, fine. I'll let you have one card. It's a Painted Viper, of course. It's probably fine. I'd like the first target to be able to damage. Well, this is... Each hero target takes one Sonic damage. Which is going to be two. And there's nothing I can do about it, so whatever. Fine. I might just go straight for her. She only has 16 HP. I think I can beat her. She does seem much easier than Outlander, which was just absolute horseshit. Oh, poor Akash. She is not looking good. She's not looking good at all. Who's considered to have the highest HP? How much does he do? Two melee damage, which is then going to be three melee damage. I guess Tempest? Did I lose my ongoing card or something? No, I still have one with land. I don't know why it didn't work. Whenever a hero target would be dealt damage by an environment card. Oh, it's an environment card. That's right. It's not everything. There's Abracadabra. Belonging to another hero is destroyed. You may return it to that player's hand. If you do, destroy this card. No, I don't want to do that. I want you 
to do what you're going to do, you're going to first deal up to three targets, one toxic damage each. That sounds good to me. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I want to do, because this would be zero? No, no, Thrashing Brambles, that's right. But everything else would take two. Well, I think I might just do that. I don't think the Ursa Major is that scary. The Shaded Owl is kind of scary because it hits everybody, which I think is pretty scary, but the Painted Viper needs to go. You do too much damage, bro. Just too much damage. Shaded Owl, I'm also going to hit you. The reason it's doing two damage is because I have Thrashing Brambles out. So it's augmenting my Primordial Seeds to do more damage. That's really good. And then I'll just do this. Because I don't want Abracadabra to work. Yes, go into the Environment Trash. Do you want to move this to your hand? No, I don't. I want to move it to the Environment Trash. That's where it belongs. She's very strange. She puts all of her seeds into the environment deck, and then when you draw them, something really good happens and they get put into play in her area. But I just never draw them. What is this? The Rathian Monolith. When this card enters play, switch to her huge character card, which is already huge. Reduce damage dealt to Skyscraper by two. Redirect any damage that would be dealt to a hero target to Skyscraper. And at the start of your turn, destroy this card. Oh my god. That sounds good. What is Catcher Ride? Switcher to Tiny. A hero target other than Skyscraper deals one target two projectile damage. Skyscraper deals one target dealt damage that way to irreducible melee damage. So it's just going to be four damage. That is super solid. Man, that is super fucking solid. Do I just do that? Like, four damage to the Shaded Owl would be... Take you down to four. Skyscraper would be able to not kill you. Damn it. Ours could finish it off, though. Is it worth it? Oh, she wouldn't be able to kill you anyway because she'd go to Tiny. And with Tiny, all you can do is put up to two Link cards... Or play up to two Link cards... Which I have zero link cards. You may put either one link card from from play. Wait. You may put either one link card from play or two link cards from your trash into your hand. Oh, oh that means I could take my link card back. And then play it again. Oh, that's that's kind of huge. I didn't even think about that. Um I'm trying to think, is anybody buffed or anything? It's just her power that's buffed. So I guess catch a ride wouldn't be huge. And what does this one do? So this makes her get tiny and then reveal cards from the top of the deck until two link cards have been revealed. You may put each of those cards either into your hand or into play. That's actually really, that's probably even better. I'm going to try that. Let's see what we can get. She's super tiny now. Oh, the neutralizing resonator. Hmm. Wait, did you draw a card too? You may put each of those cards either into your hand or into play, shuffle the deck. So why did you draw a card? Oh! Oh, it's because of proportionist. Duh, my bad. Okay, what is this? Play this card next to a non-hero target. When that target would deal three or more damage, prevent that damage. Then either destroy this card or put it on top of your deck. Hmm. Micro Assembler. Play this card next to a hero character card. That hero gains the following power. Discard a card, then search your deck for an equipment card. And put it either into your hand or into play, then shuffle your deck. I mean, that's also very solid, especially for um, Tempest, because he's got some good equipment. He's got the thing that can lower damage that he takes, and that's huge. 
Granted, it is a power, which means he would have to use that once. But you have to discard a card, too. I don't know. I think I'll just... I definitely want to play this one. That's too good to not play. To a non-hero target, whenever it would deal three or more damage. But it's only to, like, one target, so it's not going to count the Shaded Owl doing tons of damage to everybody. I could put it on the Painted Viper, though. The Ursa Major, I don't think, does enough damage. Although, with the Shaded Owl, it does technically. I'm going to put it into play. Put it on the Painted Viper. Because, oddly enough, she doesn't even attack, unless she destroys ongoing cards, which she may never even get. Do I want to put this into play? Wait, do you even have equipment cards? Uh, seeds, ongoings... No. So it would be pointless to give it to her. Does Parse have equipment? Does she have a bow? I feel like she would have a bow. She doesn't. I'm shocked. I guess she just always has her bow. Do you have equipment cards that are any good? She does have, like... Dowsing Crystal. Oh, she's got a lot of equipment cards. And she has shit cards that I could discard. That actually might not be bad. What is this one? Wand of Banishment? When a non-character card from another deck would be destroyed, you may put it on top or bottom of, the, of its deck instead if you do destroy this card. That's not bad. That'd be super good with Voss. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I think I will play that then. I was going to just not play it, but I'll put it into play. I'll give it to her. There you go, girl. Now that means I have more links in play, too. Also, I have another link here. Play this card next to a villain character card and discard the top card of that villain's deck. At the start of your turn, you may destroy one ongoing card if you do destroy this card. That would be helpful. What else can she do? Play up to two link cards. You may put either one link card from your from play or two link cards from your trash into your hand. Do I even have link cards in here? I don't. But taking back this one would be huge. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do this. We'll definitely play the Link. I don't know what to play it on, though. I guess just play it on her, probably. Oh, it automatically put it on her. That's fine. Do you want to move one card to your hand? Yes, I do. I would like to move this card, because it's not doing anything. Cool. Oh, that's super freaking cool. I mean, do we just Flash Flood it? This is also very good, but I think I think I got a flash flood. I, I don't like these blast doors. I want them gone. Kill them both. Both. Dead as shit. Good. Heal. Just keep healing. I don't like his power. I don't like Prime Warden's Tempest power. I mean, technically, it's nice. I, I could have used it, actually. I could have used it to let him play his draw three cards. That would have been huge. Ooh, Electrical Storm's good. Okay. But Downpour is just... It's so good. I may just use this one shot, probably. Select a card to put on the very bottom of the deck. Um... Reveal the top card of a deck. If it... Or put it on the top or bottom of that deck, you may draw one card. Decent. Whenever a non-hero target enters play, increase damage dealt to that target by one. Till the start of the environment turn. Start of the environment turn? That's weird. And then one shot that does damage and draws a card. Okay, so... If I put this on the bottom of the deck, because I don't really like it that much. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. It lets me draw it. Never mind. What was this again? Destroy an ongoing or environment card. I'm not going to worry about that. Oh, she can't do enough damage to kill anything either. Which sucks. She only does two damage. She could never kill the Ursa Major. It would take one damage. Owl. Needed Viper. I mean, I have to get rid of the Shaded Owl. It's buffing all the villains, so I have to get rid of it. Another impossible shot. Wow. That's pretty cool. <laughs> As the Earth Turns was destroyed. You want to move it back to your hand? Oh my god. God, that's crazy. I didn't even think about that. It means I could fuck up her card draw again for another whole turn. I'm gonna say yes. And then one player may immediately draw or, or play a card. Play a card, not draw a card. Hmm. Okay, hold, hold on, hold on. I think Skyscraper playing a card might not be a bad idea, because she can play her Link. This Link does two irreducible damage. Um, wait. That target deals itself and one other non-hero target two irreducible psychic damage, which would actually be three because of the buffed... the Owl. Meaning three damage. I could kill the Ursa Major. And hurt the Shaded Owl. Or hurt Dendron. Or Painted Viper. But Ursa Major would die. And that is big. So yeah, Skyscraper, I think you're going to play this. Play that. For sure. And honestly, I think I'm just going to put it on the Shaded Owl. So it's going to deal itself... Three damage. And then any target that I decide, which is going to be the Ursa Major, which will take... What? How is it still... Oh, it's irreducible! Right, of course. It's irreducible. Never mind. It's not going to take two damage. I forgot. It's irreducible. Of course. Goodbye, Ursa Major. It was basically just saying that Ursa Major went under her card. Because that's what happens now. Earth's Attunement. What does this do? At the end of your turn, Akash may deal herself two psychic damage. If she takes damage this way, shuffle the environment trash into the environment deck. Play the top card of the environment deck. You may destroy an environment card. Whoa. Whoa, that is huge. So... So she just plays the top card of the environment deck. If it's not a seed, destroy it. And she doesn't have to take the damage. Technically. That's only if she wants to shuffle the deck. Which right now, I do have a lot of seeds in the trash, I think. One, two, three. Three seeds. And they're all my freaking creeping mold, of course. I mean, that's very tempting. That's like super, super tempting. I'm going to take it. Like, that is too good. And I'm actually going to play that power, too. Let's just see what happens. Maybe it'll be a seed. It's a seed. Look at that. It's a strangling root seed. Oh, God, yes. That's beautiful. That means all of these things are not doing more damage to me now. There you go. That was a good play. Healing Pollen. Okay. A good draw. What is that? Hold on, hold on. Let me see, how many seeds do I have in here? I have one seed. I have no idea where it is. We could do the shuffle. 
putting what three more seeds in there but also putting all this trash back in here too yes i don't know if i like it but it might be okay i don't i don't know if i like it though it, it may not be great what was that one power? It's right here, right? Yeah, Micro Assembler. Discard a card, then search your card, or deck for an equipment card. She doesn't have to do that, though. What is this? Improbable Escape. When a hero character is reduced to zero or fewer HP, restore them to two HP, then destroy this card. When this card or any of your ongoing cards are destroyed, you may draw a card. I mean... That is... That's super fucking solid. That is just straight up a good card. Although it's not super great healing, but it's decent. So I think... Oh man, do I just do the damage? Well, the thing is, I strangled them. I strangled all of them, so her damage would be reduced a lot. It's probably not even worth it. Let's just use this power instead. Can I use it? Am I allowed to use it? Oh, there we go. There it is, right there. Discard card, then search your deck for equipment. Yeah, sure. Because I can't do anything with this anyway. So just discard it. Let me see what kind of equipment you got, girl. Mesmer Pendants. Play this card next to a non-character target. When that card would cause damage to a hero target, redirect it to a villain target that hasn't been damaged this way this turn. When it would destroy a hero ongoing, prevent it and destroy a villain ongoing. Uh, I mean, it's good. But at the start of your turn, you have to destroy this card, so it's not like it's going to be there forever. Dowsing Crystal. It has a power. Once before your next turn, when a non-hero card enters play, one hero target may deal a non-hero target two damage of a type of their choosing. You may destroy this card to increase that damage by two. Quite solid. And then the Wand of Banishment, which is not super great. I mean, the Thousand Crystal is pretty freaking solid. Oh, and I can literally just put it in play? Not that it really matters, but sure. Why not? Why put it in your hand when you can put it into play? Still, that's kind of scary. Mix it up is pretty scary. Okay, environment deck, what are you doing? Okay, I knew it. I knew I was going to reshuffle and it was going to be goddamn blast doors. I just knew it. It's probably fine. Oh god, what is that? That seems bad. Which should modify damage amount first? Uh, Una Momento? Let me see what she's doing here. Dendron deals the hero with the highest HP 5 projectile damage and the hero with the lowest HP 2 irreducible infernal damage. Destroy one equipment and one ongoing from the hero with the fewest cards in play and two equipment and two ongoing cards from the hero with the most cards in play. Jesus Christ, that's a horrible card. Uh, Shielding wins? Because if I do that first, doesn't it like Super lower? Yeah, two. That's that's not so bad. That's rough. That's really bad. Segmentation fault was destroyed. That's fine. Proportionist was destroyed. That's not great. But I guess it's fine. And what was that? So that was one equipment, one ongoing, and then two equipment and two ongoing from the hero with the most cards in play. Who has the most cards in play? Hero with the most cards in play is Akash. Oh, god damn it. So, why is it saying that I'm supposed to destroy something from... These are links. I mean, at this point, I can probably get rid of... A micro assembler? I don't think she's gonna need it again. What does this do again? 
would deal three or more damage, prevent that damage. I mean, it's not super great. I guess I'll just destroy that. It's fine. Damn it. I like being able to destroy an ongoing card. I guess I can just get rid of this, I guess. Fine. Even though Compulsion Canister is super good. Stained Wolf. Great. Super good shit. This is just going to be damage. Nothing I can do about it. Although... Oh yeah, that's right, it's going to be zero damage because the Tangled Roots. Yes, Tangled Roots coming in clutch. Or Strangling Roots, I mean. Thank you, Strangling Roots. Coming in clutch. Ow. Okay, that's fine. Shielding Winds is doing good, too. Holy shit. Okay, Skyscraper, destroy a card. What? At the start of your turn, you may destroy one ongoing card if you do destroy this card. I, I don't want to destroy our ongoing cards, so I'm going to say skip. I would only want to use that on villain ongoing cards for sure. I'm actually tempted to do the Therathian Monolith just for the hell of it. Just, just for the hell of it. It would be hilarious. I'm not, fuck it, I'm going to do it. Now she's huge again. She gets to use her huge power. And just kick the shit out of everything. I hope. This should do three damage. Oh no, she lost her buff. That's right. That's only going to do two damage then. Two damage to everything. Feels bad. I was hoping it was going to kill that Shaded Owl. Not quite. But it does mean that my heroes take zero sonic damage. So hey, there, there is a uh, upside to it. See? They all take zero. Good. All zero. Oh, I, actually, they take even less than zero. Or somebody was taking less than zero. I'm not really sure why. Okay, now. Uh, I mean, there's Electrical Storm, too. But he could play a card. Free lightning damage. No, I don't think it's worth it. I'm going to draw the three cards. Okay, Grievous Hailstorm. The, basically the opposite of the downpour. Reclaim from the Deep is also very good. And Lightning Slash is super good. Okay. I would love to have her kill herself. Which technically we could do, but I think it just takes too long. Right? If there are ever at least six tattoos beneath this card, she deals herself ten toxic damage. And then flips, and she'll die if she does 10 damage. But, yeah. Six cards is rough. That means we have to kill six tattoos. It's rough. I'm going to use Downpour. Downpour is just too good. Can't say no to that. I also need to be really careful with Akash. She is getting really low on HP. Oh, it even healed Strangling Roots. Nice. Cool. I mean, it, it heals all hero targets. Oh, hell yes. God, I'm so happy to see Flash Floods again. Because this is going to be a problem. One player may discard their hand and draw one card. Discard their whole hand? If at least one card is discarded this way, the environment deck cannot play cards this turn. Does it say they may? May discard. Okay, so I don't actually have to do that because the blast doors don't really scare me and I don't want the, the environment deck to not be played. It's important that it does get played. Whenever a non-hero target enters play, increase damage dealt to that target by one until the start of the environment turn. Okay. There's also impossible shot, which is super solid. 
Feels like such a waste to put it on the shaded dial, although... Oh, I don't have to. I don't have to. I can shoot... I think I'll shoot the Painted Viper with the impossible shot. Set up a kill with Mara. Syntactic analysis. Very good. Very good indeed. And then use her ability to take out the Shaded Owl. Or I could take out the Painted Viper. Ah, uh, you know what? I might actually just take out the Painted Viper. If I keep the Shaded Owl all around, I can do some magical Mara thing. Depending upon if I even can. Recompile. What was that? Is something about draw twice as many cards as you discarded? What? Hold on a second, what was that? Recompile. Oh, discard up to three cards. Draw twice as many cards as you discarded this way. Wow, that's... Really fucking good. <laughs> so if you discard three cards, you just draw six cards? That's super powerful. Fucking healing pollen. Why are you here? I don't want you here. I want you somewhere else. The Strangling Roots is here. Meaning I could do damage? I wish she could use two powers. That would be super good. I guess I could just throw out the healing pollen just for the hell of it. Because I don't want to do this. This is going to make her take psychic damage. I kind of want her to play tattoos. I guess I'll just play the healing pollen just for the hell of it. I could also do this. I don't know, that's pretty dangerous. A lot of damage to herself. I think I'm just going to use this one. This power is just too good. Yes! It's a seed! Oh, that's so freaking lucky! That's fantastic, honestly. It does mean that the owl is dead, which is kind of sad. It's not going to buff anything. Can't do any magical Mara stuff or majestic Mara or whatever. It's fine. What was that? Thrashing Brambles? Yeah, that's huge damage. That takes care of all of her tattoos for now. Well, not the Stained Wolf. Uh, Mara. Well, maybe Mara can handle the Stained Wolf. Uh, stained thingamajigger. I'm going to get rid of these blast doors. They suck. Get out of here. Man, that power is so good. Like, Earth's Attunement is such a good power. Especially when you have so many seeds in there. You're really good, then. No, I'm not doing that. That would shuffle one card. Not worth it. Not worth it at all. What's this Dowson Crystal again? When a non-hero card enters play, one hero target may deal a non-hero target two damage of a type of their choosing. Once before your turn, though. Ah, uh, maybe it's not as good as I thought. Kind of a shitty power. I mean, I'd rather just use her normal power. And it's buffed, too. Oh, uh, man. Do I dare? Equipment or environment card? No, I can't really do it. I'll just play this. What does this do again? Reel the top card of each other hero deck. One player may put their revealed card into their hand or into play. Replace or discard the other revealed cards. If a card is put into play this way, destroy this card. Oh! Oh, I see. So if they put it into their hand, the card stays. If they put it into play, destroy the card. Gotcha. That might be too risky. That's a little too risky. So this would do two damage. And then it's going to psychically do two damage to Dendron. I love it. Puncher! Nice. 
Mesmer Pandit. Okay. Not the greatest of cards. Oh, Jesus Christ, what the hell is this thing? Like nightmare fuel. Whenever a non-subject card is destroyed, this card regains 2 HP. Gross. At the end of the environment turn, this card deals to three targets other than itself with the lowest HP to psychic damage. Oof. I guess it's just going to sh shoot all of my seeds, which I am completely fine with. Or Therathian Monolith. So you could do one with the land as well. I mean... I mean, one with the land is pointless. It's all seeds, anyway. Or Therathian Monolith would do... Zero damage, I want to say? I could save my seeds? That might actually be better. It's fine, just whatever. Oh, select the first target to be dealt damage. Oh, Stained Wolf actually gets dealt damage! Die, Stained Wolf! I thought it was going to be all my seeds, for sure. And then the funny thing is, I can just Therathian Monolith it. Right? Which should redirect damage first? Well, I mean, this can't. This would be dumb. This is fine. She'll take zero damage. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, just keep doing it. Zero damage sounds great to me. I mean, I was okay with the seeds taking damage, but... Pfft, no. The thing is, I don't think you can... I don't think the Therathian mon Monolith is a May. I think that's something that has to happen. Oh, this is scary. This is ongoing. I don't like that. Stained Wolf. Gross. Hold on a second. What does this do? Whenever a tattoo would be dealt damage by a non-villain target, it first deals that target three radiant damage. Ew. Gross. I don't like that at all. <laughs> So basically, now it has Radiant Thorns. That's disgusting. I hate that. That would be two. Or two, because it's a Therathia Monolith. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. She's taking two damage regardless. It's fine. And Monolith is going to get destroyed. Wait, what? Destroy a card! Oh, fuck yes! Get rid of that! Get rid of that shit. I don't want that at all. Good. I don't. I do not want those radiant spikes. No, thank you. Thank goodness for that, like, plague rat dude that was still there. Wait, how did I get him back? Oh, maybe it's just another one. Hmm. Can I just kill her? I think I could just kill her this turn. I think. If I play Catch a Ride, which of course is going to make her tiny, which is fine. So now a hero target other than Skyscraper deals one target to projectile damage, which doesn't really matter who it is. I guess since it's Parse in here, we might as well just do Parse, right? And I'm just going to do it to her, because she's so close to dead. There we go. And now she's down to 3 HP. And now I can still play this, right? Play up to two Link cards. Uh, yeah. That's fine. I'll play this one. And I could play this one, but I don't really care to, so it's fine. And then what was this again? You may put either one Link card from play or two Link cards from your trash into your hand. I think trash because I can grab this one and this one that's fine oh Therathia monolith again ridiculous just ridiculous so this boss isn't so bad at all. She's actually kind of fun to fight. I'm not having a bad time. Oh, she's dead. Yeah, she's dead. Lightning Slash. Dead. I win. 
Get out of here. <laughs> oh, Brooke, you're finally off the phone? Goodness, what were you on the phone with for so long? I beat her. And look, our our heroes were still very healthy, except for Akash, because she just does too much damage to herself. That was pretty solid, though. Let me see, she does have a variant, though, doesn't she? Or was that was her easier variant, I think. Where is she? Where the hell is she? Oh, there she is, Dendron. Yeah, see, this is her harder. That's what I was fighting, was the easier variant. Ugh. Man. Rough. Oh, it was Kalia? Oh, okay, okay. This looks like it's Cauldron, yep. It's the Outlander again? No. Complexity 3? God damn it. Why does everybody have to be Complexity 3? Complexity 2. Rick Silver's 1. Fanatic's 2. Is that a good Fanatic? Regains 1 HP, draw a card. <sighs> totally solid. <sighs> Do I really want to try fighting the Outlander again? Hmm? You said it wrong, but you were close. Oh, is it not Kalia? That's what it looks like. Is it Kalia? Kalai? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure then. What was this one again? Difficulty 2? Ugh. Guess we'll try it. I mean, I didn't have very good luck with the Outlander before, but maybe with this team, maybe I'll have better luck. Hopefully. The blight of your powers will be wiped clean from this earth and every other. Now, let us all just sit back and think a spell. No need to get all riled up. I think this is my favorite scholar. I don't like the scholar, though. I'm really bad with the scholar. He's tricky. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess we don't have to look at him. We already know what he's like. He's a piece of shit. Oh, he gets Archangel immediately. Good. Good. A good trace. Yep, out of touch. Okay. Ow. What does this do again? First time Outlanders dealt four or more damage from a single source each turn. Play the top card of the villain deck. Disgusting. Oh, it's only the first time, though. Okay. The end of the villain turn deals each non-villain target one irreducible projectile damage. Gross. Or whatever it's fine. I messaged you a voice recording on how to say her name. Okay, I'll, I'll check it out after the, uh, after the stream. Because I'm almost done. This will probably be my last game. Hopefully I'll beat the Outlander. I did not beat him the first time, but maybe I'll get luckier this time. I hope so. What do you do again? The Scholar regains 1 HP. Super solid. Yeah, this is the better Scholar. Redirect all damage that would be dealt to hero targets to the Scholar. At the start of your turn, destroy this card. So he can just, like, take all the damage. I don't know if I like that. Reveal the top three cards of your deck. Put two in your hand and one on the bottom of your deck. Probably fine. Scholar deals each non-hero target one fire damage. Then the Scholar regains X HP, where X equals the number of targets dealt damage this way. Which sucks, because it's only the Outlander, so terrible. It's really bad. Draw five cards, immediately end your turn. I mean... Super solid. I'm gonna do it. I mean, if it's the beginning turn, let's do it. Let's draw those five cards and immediately end the turn. It doesn't mean he can't heal, but it's fine. He can only heal himself anyway. He hasn't taken that much damage. This will give us at least more possibilities to deal with stuff. Who is that? Is that Wraith? Might have been Wraith there. 
Oh wow, regains two HP and draws two cards. He's pretty damn good at regaining HP. This guy, I have no idea who he is. This is a cauldron mod, dude. So his power is play or draw a card. If you played a trick this way, you draw a card. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Cheap trick. Discard the top card of your deck. Reveal cards from the top of your deck until you reveal a trick. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck and put the trick into play. Oh, so it just goes into play? That's interesting. Graveyard Bridge. You may shuffle a card from your trash into your deck. If you do, put a card with the same name from your trash into play. Shuffle all copies of that card from your trash into your deck. That's kind of crazy. Discard your hand and draw three cards. I fold. <laughs> I, I guess I'll play a cheap trick. Wait, what was it? Draw a card. I mean, it's pretty solid. Yeah, sure. What you got? Aw, oh, fuck. That's not good. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Hold on. Increase the next damage dealt by Baccarat by one, or Baccarat deals one target two toxic damage. Well, I'm assuming he's not gonna do any damage? Although this could play another trick that could do damage, which could buff it. But I think I'm just gonna do the straight up two toxic damage. I mean, that, that's solid. Go for it. Works for me. And then we play his, his uh, thing. We can either draw a card or play, and if you play a trick this way, you draw a card. So, since I have a... Tr oh, that's not a trick. Never mind. This is a trick. Ah, shit. This isn't actually a trick. Unless it would still count? I don't know. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to play a card and see what happens. Play a card? Because technically I am going to play a trick. It's just this is not a trick? That's a trick. One player may draw a card. Solid. Super solid. I... Guess... Expatriate? She's going to be going next anyway. Sure. I hate her ammo cards, though, because her ammo cards are just like, you can put the ammo in and that's it. You get it for one turn and that's it. Now, did he get to draw a card? I don't think he did. No, he didn't. He only has three cards. What is this? All in. Discard a card from your hand. If you do, Baccarat deals each non-hero target one infernal damage and one radiant damage. Very solid. But when it comes to Outlander, it's super worthless. Fuck, why does she have to have her assault rifle? That's the weaker one. Quick draw? What does that do? Search your deck or your trash for either pride or prejudice. There it is. There's her guns. I knew she had special guns. Start of your turn, you may take one ammo card from your trash and put it on top of your deck. Start of your turn, you may play one ammo card. Decent. The assault rifle is not what I'm looking for. Because this is good for hitting a whole bunch of enemies. But her pistols, if I remember correctly, they're super good. Let me see here real quick. And they play off of each other, I think? Where are they? Uh, da, 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 da. There's Pride. Pride and Prejudice. There they are, right there. They can also have two ammos on them at one time. How? You can't play two ammo cards. Expatriate deals one target, two projectile damage. Or Pride is... If Prejudice is in play, you may use its power now. See? So she can double shot. I... I mean, I don't really know who I would pick. It doesn't really matter. It's fine. They're both kind of the same. Deck. Not trash, because there's nothing in the trash. I suppose I would take Pride first... I guess it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter. 
Ah, whatever. We'll, we'll take pride first. At least it's a very solid shot. What does this do? Just play a card? Which is also very solid. Play this card next to a gun. Increase the damage of that card's power by one and change the type to fire. After that power is used, destroy this card. See, the ammo just... It sucks. It's not great. I'll just use pride. Take this, bitch. I'll shoot you in the face with my pistol. Boom! It's done. Black jacket? Oh. Wait, what does that do? If expatriate would be dealt three or more damage from a single source, prevent all of it and destroy this card? I mean, that's not great. I, I guess it's great that it prevents all the damage, but it does destroy the card, which kind of sucks. So, Quicksilver, what are you up to? Quicksilver deals one target, two melee damage. Solid. Alloy Storm. One-shot combo? Hmm. So, can you combo then? Quicksilver, Quicksilver deals each non-hero target one projectile damage. You may play a finisher, or Quicksilver may deal herself two melee damage and play a combo. Okay, so you can... That's interesting. And there's the finisher. Destroy a target with three or fewer HP, or deal one target three irreducible melee damage. Decent. Fire Retort. When this card enters play, draw a card, and Quicksilver regains two HP. Solid. When Quicksilver is dealt damage, you may destroy this card. If you do, you may play a card. Oh. Interesting. Liquid Metal. Reveal cards from the top of your deck until you reveal a combo and a finisher and put them into your hand. Shuffle the other revealed cards back into your deck. Quicksilver may deal herself two melee damage to and play a combo now. Interesting. So basically, I could just do Alloy Storm. Do some damage. And then instead of doing this, because I don't have a combo, I can just play a finisher. And I don't even have to do damage to myself. Just play this. Deal one target, three irreducible melee damage. Hell yeah, dude. And then use her power to do even more damage? Damn! Okay, I mean, that's... That's super solid. That is crazy good. Not bad at all. Alright, Fanatic, what have you got? Got Embolden. Play this card next to a hero character card. That hero may use an additional power during their power phase. Could be super useful to expatriate. At the end of that hero's turn, Fnatic may deal them two radiant damage. If they take no damage this way, destroy this card. Not great. Hmm. It's kind of scary. A little too scary there. Deals one target, two melee damage. You may use an additional power this turn, which is not super great because she doesn't have any other powers right now. Zealous Offense. Hey, that's one of the villains. Start of your turn, select up to two non-character card targets. Those targets cannot deal damage until the start of your next turn. The end of your turn, if you have not dealt at least three damage this turn, destroy this card. Wait, what? Has dealt no damage this turn? Hmm. At the start of your turn, select up to two non-character card targets. Those targets cannot deal damage until the start of your next turn. Does that count? If I do it on his traces? I don't think so. I don't think it would work. I mean, Sacrosanct Martyr is okay. And what does she do? She just, like, straight up regains cards, and, or regains HP and draws cards. That's really solid, even though it is just one HP. 
Although I don't, I don't want to hit Archangel. What is it though? Dealt four or more damage from a single source. Damn it. So I would have to be uh, careful with Sacrosanct Martyr. I think I could do it. So basically just have her deal three damage to herself. And then she can do three damage to him. And we don't have to worry about the Archangel. Good. Consecrated ground. Okay. And what is this environment? I have no idea. Oh god. Doesn't look good. It's another test subject. Shit. What do you do? At the end of the environment turn, if there are no chemical triggers in play, which there are none, each player may look at the top card of their deck and put it back on either the top or bottom of their deck. Otherwise, play the top card of the villain deck. Otherwise? Okay, so you're basically saying that I can scry? That's kind of cool. I'll scry, hell yeah. The Scholar, where do you want to keep... Uh, to move, keep moving? What is that? Search your deck for an elemental card and put it into play. Shuffle your deck, you may play a card. I'll put that on the top deck, that's fine. Baccarat, what have you got? Ace in the hole, you may play a card. You may use Baccarat's innate power twice... What is that? During your power phase this turn. Ooh. Hmm. That's very interesting. Put that on top of the deck, too. So basically, if it's something you don't want, you can put it on the bottom. There's the tactical shotgun! That's what I want! Although that does four projectile damage? Maybe I don't want that. That would trigger Archangel every single time. I think I'm still going to put it on the top, though. Quicksilver? What is this? The first time each turn that Quicksilver would deal herself damage to play a combo card, prevent that damage. Oh, damn. That's pretty tight. Yeah, keep that up there, too. Fanatic? That's also just seriously good. Wait, what does it say? Uh, either the top or bottom of their deck, otherwise play the top card of the villain deck. Oh. So I think it's saying, basically, if there's no... If there's a chemical trigger in play, it's going to play the top card of the villain deck, which is scary. Other than that, we just get a scry, which is super solid. Out of touch was destroyed. That's good. Fuck. Oh, god damn. Not the anchored fragment. Which target is considered to have the highest HP? What is it doing again? One melee damage? I mean, that's not that bad. I'll direct it to him, for sure. Okay, this doesn't really matter. It's all one irreducible projectile damage, so who cares? It's fine. It's not the end of the world. Man, I hate the fact that he pulled Archangel first, though. That's real rough. Like, how many traces does he have? Oh, shit, there are no traces in here. Never mind. Oh, his traces are under him. That's right. One, two, three, four. Okay, so he has five different traces, I think. Meaning one will never be played, I think. Because they're not, they're not played from his deck. Right, the only way you can get traces is flipping him. Oh, that's rough. So you have to do a shitload of damage to this guy. That's rough. It's really rough. What's this? Expect the worst. Whenever the Scholar would be dealt damage, reduce that damage to zero. Start of your turn, the Scholar regains 2 HP and destroys this card. Not bad. Not bad at all. What's this? Discard your hand. 
The Scholar deals one target X lightning damage, where X equals the number of cards discarded this way. Holy shit. That's a lot of damage. But, that would also mean you'd have to play a card. Is it worth it? I mean, he could flip him. Because that's seven damage right there. Unless I want to, like, keep these cards. Ah, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's seven damage right there. Boom. You flip, bitch. Okay. We set to 20. He destroys the anchored thingamajigger. There's Dragonborn. Bad. Yep, there's the top card of the villain deck. That's bad. Knight's Hatred. Uh-oh. Well, that's an ongoing. That's really not good. Here. Heal. Good. Keep moving. That's actually... Just fine, honestly. <laughs> if you're gonna draw a card, might as well draw something that's gonna get you something. Because he only has one card. Discard your hand and draw three cards. You may shuffle a card from your trash into your deck. If you do, put a card with the same name from your trash into play. Shuffle all copies of that card from your trash into your deck. Very weird. And one radiant damage. Hmm. And what does Knight's Hatred do? Increase damage dealt. Reduce damage dealt. Oh, good. Start of the villain turn. Destroy this card. Okay. So even if I did this, it would do zero damage. Zero and zero damage. Good. Okay, so that's pointless. What have you got in here? Cheap trick. Afterlife Euchre? Oh, that's that one. That's right. What is this one? Bring down the house. Shuffle any number of pairs of cards with the same name from your trash into your deck. You may destroy up to X ongoing or environment cards where X is the number of pairs you shuffled this way. Hmm. It's not bad. Did it say I get to play it? Is that... That's a one-shot. It's not a trick. No, wait. It was this one. You may shuffle a card from your trash into your deck. If you do, put a card with the same name from your trash into play. Damn. Damn it. So I guess that means I can only play this or this. One player may draw a card. It's not that useful. Honestly, I think I would just play it on Cheap Trick. Just try it out. Shuffle that into the deck. And then I can immediately put Cheap Trick into play. Which plays this again, of course. Ugh. Does it count as both next damage dealt? Hold on, I'm curious if this counts as both damage dealt. Here. Because what we'll do is we'll play this. Play a card. All in and see if this does lots of damage. Instead of little damage. card. Oh, it still says Afterlife Euchre. I'm wondering if it does, if the Afterlife Euchre boosts both of his damage of his card. 
I was Dragonborn. God damn it. Sucks. It did not. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, all in fucked him up too. That's fine. Although I did like the scrying, it was kind of nice. Shit. Oh, those are tricks too. Okay. Put it on the flak jacket just for the hell of it. Just play a card. Not really what I'm looking for. Gonna suck. I mean, she's gonna take fire damage. Oh, actually, no. She's. It's gonna break, right? Yeah, it broke the flak jacket. That's fine. the tactical shotgun. It does do a lot of damage. And technically, Quicksilver combos? So she can output a lot of damage, but it's not all at once. So it doesn't count, I think. Coalescing Spear. Quicksilver deals one target three projectile damage. You may play a finisher, or Quicksilver may deal herself two melee damage and play a combo. I don't have a combo. So you reveal a combo and a finisher, put them into your hand. Shuffle the other revealed cards back into your deck. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Here's a combo. And a finisher. Nice. Okay, that's fine. And then, yes, right? Yes. Because that means I can keep comboing. What is this? Whispering Steel. Quicksilver deals one target two irreducible melee damage. You may play a finisher, or Quicksilver may deal herself to do more damage to do another combo. We could do big combos here. I'm gonna try for a big combo, see what happens. This is irreducible. Meaning he has to take the full damage. Dragonborn reacts, which sucks. But then deal one deal two more damage. Get the other combo going. For three projectile damage, which will do two, and she won't get burned this time, because it only happens the first time. Now we play a finisher, because there is no... <laughs> Deal yourself two melee damage to no effect! Yeah, why would anybody do that? Play a finisher. Guard breaker! Boom. More irreducible damage. And luckily it was all low enough that he doesn't play a card from Archangel. Very lucky. And then just straight up do another one melee damage here. Fine. She's a little low on health though, so gotta be careful with that. She draws another combo. Okay. What does this do? Destroy an ongoing card or an environment card. Fanatic deals up to three targets, one radiant damage each. I mean, I think I've got to do it, because I can get rid of his ongoing. I know it's a little late, but it's better late than never, I guess. This way he at least takes some damage. Then he's going to burn me. No, no more damage. Although, hold on. Oh, shoot, I could have done more damage to her to do more damage this way. 
But actually, I kind of don't want to do that anyway. I'm going to use this power. Because remember, we want to keep it to three. I want to keep it to exactly three. So that he doesn't play so many cards from his deck. We got to get those traces out. Brutal Sensor is so good. Okay. Oh god, what the hell? Thing looks creepy. What does it do? What does it do? Hold on. If there are no chemical triggers in play, reduce damage dealt to the hero target with the lowest HP by one. Otherwise, reduce damage dealt to the villain targets by one. Ugh. So he's good for me now. But he always hits the highest HP, which sucks. This is fine. He's got healing. He's got healing out the ass, so he's fine. Select a player to discard a card. Oh, god damn it, you piece of fuck. That was his only card, too. It was his only card. But now he can't even play a card. This is all just irreducible. Who cares? It's fine. He's gonna at least do damage to the environment card, too. The environment target, which is awesome. Is Uncanny Quicksilver considered to have the lowest HP? Uh... Probably? Does she have the lowest HP? Oh, both her and Fnatic. Can they both have the lowest HP? Oh, it's irreducible. It doesn't matter. Never mind. That's right. It's irreducible. Doesn't matter. Oh, you're pissing off your kids? What are you doing? This is also going to be rough. <laughs> There's not much I can do, though. I mean, at least he hasn't got the trace out that buffs his... Oh, this is not irreducible, though, right? So this should work? Yeah, it does work. Yeah, I can do it with both of them. Perfect. Cool. Thank you, Foamborn dude. I hate the fact that he has no cards. You know what? Maybe I won't use his power. If I skip my turn, I draw two cards. That could be huge if you have zero cards. So I'm going to do that. And he, he still has a decent amount of health. There we go. Oh, hey, it's the Dreamer. He's friends with the Dreamer. I mean, I could play this, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Might as well do some damage to him. Although he will take combo, or he will take the reaction. That sucks. Nothing you can do about it, though. And then just use his power to draw a card. Play a card? No, there's no cards to play. Discard your hand and draw three cards? That's huge. That's massive when you have zero cards, or like one card. Ace of Sinners? Hmm. I don't know if that's any good. Tactical Shotgun does four damage. I mean, that sounds super good. It would get him to flip, but he would have to play another card, too. I'm really afraid of that. I, I guess I'm going to do it, though. Because Pride would only do two damage. Not enough. I'm going to try it. Because we've got to get him to get these traces out. There we go. He's back up to 20. Another trace. Mage killer. Great. Fucking hate mage killer. 
Which card should take effect first? I mean, does it even matter? Not particularly. Well, not Archangel, because that will draw a card. Let's do Dragonborn first. This way we know that Dragonborn is only going to be two damage. Because if Archangel's going to play a card that would have buffed his damage, which... No, it doesn't seem like it's Disarming Blow. It sucks. Fucking piece of shit. He's just making me discard cards all the time, you stupid whore. God, I just tried to get cards here. Either discard one card or destroy this card. Reduce damage dealt to the scholar. What was this? Deals one target X radiant damage, where X equals the number of non-hero targets in play. There are two non-hero target cards in play. I mean, I guess I just get rid of this because it's not going to do any good anyway. He can't. He can't have cards. I just can't hold on to cards at all. So I get rid of speed loading. A little clunky. Ooh, the submachine gun. That's also decent. Coalescing Spear does three projectile damage. But it's a one-shot, so I'm I'm like super fucked now. His mage killer is gonna do massive damage. It's only the first time you play one shot though, so I guess her combo wouldn't get killed completely. But we've gotta do some damage, so let's do it. That's fine. He can heal himself. He dealt damage. Okay. Dragonborn, yeah. Of course, and I don't have a finisher, or I don't have combos, so I'm just going to skip. Get the power. Some more damage. I don't even know if this guy is possible to beat. And I bet now that I have five heroes, I actually have to have all five goddamn traces out, I bet. You want to bet? Yup, there it is. If there are fewer than five trace cards in play, Outlander flips. Reduce the first damage dealt to Outlander each turn by five. My god. Did anybody balance this character? Because he is he's bullshit. His traces are fucking ridiculous. Like they are way too good. What does this do again? Oh, yeah, that one. Not super useful. Let me use an additional power this turn. That actually can be helpful, because then I could heal myself. I could do some damage. Do some more damage. And heal myself. Solid. Yeah, I think I'll do that. It is a one-shot, though, so mage killer. And mage killer. It's a shit. Not to mention Dragonborn, which happens every single time. Every single time you do first bit of damage, it's absolutely fucking ridiculous. The amount of counters these bosses have is just fucking bonkers. It really is ridiculous. I'll do three. Oh, wait. Does this work? Hold on. The amount of radiant damage dealt to Fnatic this turn. No, so she would have to take the damage. No. She has to take the damage to do the damage. She can't not take the damage and then do the damage. She gets to draw a card too, which is pretty solid. Oh, nice. As the Aegis of Resurrection, that's huge. Uh oh, there's a chemical trigger. That's bad. God. I 
What does this do? If there are no chemical triggers in play, this card deals each villain target two infernal damage. Otherwise, this card deals each hero target two infernal damage. Oh, good. Great. That's fantastic. Exactly what I needed. More damage. Good. I mean, the Outlander doesn't do enough damage, that's for sure. And just in case people didn't know, I'm being extremely fucking sarcastic there. He does unfathomable amounts of damage. One melee damage and whatever. Here, sure. And now we just take a shitload of damage. So, okay, sure. Just fuck me up, dude. I'm done. I don't think he's beatable. I don't actually think he is. I think he's way too broken. Or with five heroes, he's fucking impossible to beat. Maybe with three, you could probably do it, because then he would only have three traces. And maybe you get two that are not, or you get the two terrible ones that are not there. I mean, all of his traces are fucking terrible. Just a whole bunch of fire damage now. Good. Real good. Really, really good. Super good. Very, very super good. What the fuck? Why are they taking no damage? Is it because of the chemical trigger? This card is indestructible. If at least one test subject is in play, start the environment turn, destroy this card. When this card enters play, search the environment, blah, 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 for the halberd. Shuffle the deck. Reduce damage dealt. Yeah, okay. That's what it is. What would this do? Three. Sure. Oh my god, it's so ridiculous. It's so fucking ridiculous. Like, look at the damage he can output! It's ridiculous! There is no way anybody playtested this shit. There's no way. And he's a difficulty too? Are you fucking kidding me? You have to be kidding me. This guy should be like a difficulty 7. He's impossible to beat. What is this? Increased damage dealt by hero targets by 1. Start of your turn, shuffle two cards with the same name from your trash into your deck, or this card is destroyed. I mean, it's it's pointless. It's it's totally pointless. Good. Good. I love Mage Killer. Mage Killer is the best trace. Does he does he at least draw one trick? Please? Any trick? No. No trick. No trick, meaning if he plays a card, he doesn't get to draw. Great. Reduce damage dealt to hero targets by one. Start of your turn, shuffle two cards with the same name. I mean, I do have two cards with the same name in here, right? I have Eiffold. That one. Afterlife Euchre. Yeah, I, I, could, I could get this thing going. Let's do that. card. This basically just means that all heroes are now going to take one less damage, which I mean isn't going to make any difference, but it still hopefully maybe does something. Well, now he takes less damage, so the tactical shotgun makes more sense now. play any of these, really. So I'll just skip her play. Do the tactical shotgun. Yep, he takes less damage. 
and Dragonborn reacts, which will at least do one damage. We can keep the Ace of Saints out there for a bit. All up points. Ooh, nice. Not that that's super useful, though. Good metal. You know what? I think I'll just play the liquid metal. Who's considered to have the highest HP? Um, him, I guess. He can at least heal himself. Fucking irreducible bullshit, dude. He has too much irreducible bullshit. That, that's one reason why he sucks, too. He's just a badly designed boss, really. No, you're not gonna do two melee damage to yourself to play a combo. No, you're already super dead. Just do this because it's not a one shot. It only does one damage. Fucking ridiculous. And there's Dragonborn, of course. To counteract every damage that I do to him. We gain 6 HP immediately at the end of your turn. I mean, it's not bad, actually. <laughs> not bad at all. I... Jeez. I think I'm probably just gonna grab the Aegis. And fucking heal, I guess. What else can I do besides die? One shots are just too deadly with this stupid piece of shit. And they get even worse when he gets his other trace out. So, I mean, like, if I think. What the fuck? Oh, fuck. That thing's not gonna die. Well, I'm fucked. I thought that was gonna be destruct or destroyed at the beginning of the turn, but as long as there's test subjects, that chemical trigger thing is never gonna die. Meaning, they're never gonna die. And they're probably just gonna hurt me. They're never gonna hurt him. Because of the chemical trigger, it makes them all evil instead of good. So I'm totally fucked? Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, now I just have to destroy five ongoing or equipment cards. Oh, that's all of them. Really? Good. I'm super glad about that. Super glad. That's super good. That means all that defense that I just put up. Gone. Oh, the ages? Gone. Just gone. Everything gone. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Th this guy is stupid. He's stupid as shit. I want to say that he's fun and designed well, but he's really not. He's just bad. You know, I'm just going to click because th this is just going to be a shitload of damage and we're going to die this turn. So let's just get it over with. I don't have time for this shit. Yep, we don't have time for this shit, really. He just he, he takes so goddamn long. The whole thing just takes so long. Three melee damage. Oh, good. Well, that means he's dead. Good. Really good. Really good. Really well designed. Super well designed. What can you do? Up to two hero targets regain one HP. I mean, at least that's good. At least that's really good. <laughs> Not that it's going to help any. That's definitely not going to help any. I still just do her. Doesn't matter. Uh, what is this one? You may destroy X ongoing or environmental cards. Any number of pairs of cards, the same name, as trash and death deck. Ongoing or environmental cards. I mean, I could do that at least. One, two, three. 
Do I have three pairs? I think I do. I could do that. Might as well. Great. Uh, we'll do this one first. That's one. Oh, I do have three pairs. That's good. There. And then I can do, well, I could destroy the anchored fragment too. Honestly, this will destroy itself, won't it? Does this destroy itself at the beginning of the turn? It's indestructible if there's at least one test subject in play at the start of the environment turn. Destroy this card. Okay, so I don't have to destroy that. I'll just destroy both of these test subjects. And I guess just get rid of Knight's Hatred for now. Anchored Fragment really isn't doing anything. And it really isn't going to do anything anymore anyway because I, I have nothing for it to destroy. One projectile. You may play a card. I mean, that's just a terrible idea. Draw. I'll just draw. Cheap trick. I mean, I play a one-shot, I'm gonna die. Doesn't matter. Another cheap trick. That's fine. So a double draw, that's fine. Fine. I'll assault rifle the bastard then, I guess. She's gonna die anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yep, there's Dragonborn. Like I said, super, super balanced. Right? Like, super balanced. Like, Dragonborn is way broken. This, this is a stupid card. Actually, all of his traces are just fucking retarded. They're so bad. They are some of the worst cards I've ever seen in this game. And so if Cauldron, or the person who made Cauldron, made this, then, dude, it's bad. It's real bad. Really terrible. And apparently just, like, impossible to kill. He has so much goddamn irreducible damage, it's ridiculous. So it doesn't even matter if you get, like, blocks up and stuff, because it's irreducible damage. Sure, whatever. I mean, it's a one-shot, so somebody's dying, probably. Sure. Wow, take that one damage, yeah, and then get countered by two damage. Of course, of course, why not? And then don't you at least heal? Yeah, you do get to heal. And then she can do one more heal. Yeah, this guy is ridiculous. He is ridiculous. Everything about this boss, I just hate. He is just very badly designed. You wouldn't think he would be badly designed, but he does way too much damage. Oh, it does subject. Can she help? Oh. She healed me. Not that that's going to help any, but she did heal me. And the assault rifle's destroyed. And there's another anchored fragment. Wow. Good. As if one wasn't enough, right? Yep. Whatever. Just... Do it, whatever, I don't care. I'm going to lose soon anyway, I don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. Did you kill somebody? I mean, basically, we're all down to like zero HP. You just keep healing as much as you can, that's all you can really do. I have no idea who to heal. They're all just as terrible as the rest. <laughs> I guess cheap trick. I mean, it's not going to really matter. Every time I play a one-shot, an age killer goes off. Every time. Not the first time. Right? It's not the first time every turn. It's every goddamn time you play a one-shot. 
Oh, no, it does say the first time. But, I mean, it, it's still enough. It's enough to do so much goddamn damage. One player may draw a card. I mean, who cares? We have no chance. I mean, did that even do anything? I have no idea. I guess technically he can play another shot or another card. Play a card. Just play out your whole damn hand. It's fine. Card toss. Well, I got him to have all of his traces at least. Or not all of his traces, but four. And now we're super fucked. Yep, there's Crusader. That is most definitely the end of life. Yep. Guaranteed. And he's dead. And... You know what? There's nothing I can do anyway. Just play the submachine gun and die. Just do it. I'm done. I hate this boss. He's a piece of shit. He is terribly designed. And even if you had somebody that could do, like, a shitload of damage to him, it doesn't matter. He's horribly, horribly designed. I mean, he looks cool. He looks super awesome. But there's no way he's beatable. Just, can you make sure to just kill me, please? May deal 6 melee damage to a target with more than HP, or 3 melee damage to a target with 8 or fewer HP. Damn. Whatever. Thank you. Please just kill me. Just kill me. Here comes Dragonborn. Stupid combo. It says that's only the first time, too, but it's... It's still freaking enough. It should only be able to happen, like, once per round or something, but it happens every turn. He gets so much goddamn damage potential. It's ridiculous. Fanatic gain regains one HP, wow. Select melee, fire, or radiant as this card's damage type. Deals one target, three damage of that type. I mean, it's, it's fine. Sure, I mean, I suppose I'll just kill myself. Because I don't think there's anything I can do here. Mend that damage. Whenever Fanatic would be dealt 5 or more damage from a single source, reduce that damage by 2. I mean, it's not going to help any. <laughs> None of this is going to help any. I'll just take the absolution, it's fine. And do some damage! I don't care what damage it is, it doesn't matter. Radiant, whatever, who cares. Doesn't matter at all. He's dead. Dead. See, you can't tell me that's a good design boss. You can't tell me this this but this boss design is good. He has to be impossible to beat. I can't think of anybody that can actually beat him. He has so much irreducible damage, like you can't beat him. But he looks cool. So you do get props for making a cool looking boss, but you get zero props for making a boss that is unbeatable. I don't like it at all. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the stream. Like I said, it's it went a little bit late because this guy is such a piece of shit. Oh, apparently that's what happens. Okay, anyway, that's going to do it for the stream. Hopefully you all did enjoy it, and I will see you all in the next stream. Bit of a sound.